All right, troops, and welcome to another episode of the Flip the Mindset podcast, a platform of hope for people struggling with the pressures of modern day society. Hope that we can get back from the darkest of places. Today's guest is the one and only Mark Laurie, known throughout Glasgow and beyond as the Neddy Scientist. Mark is a gym owner, personal trainer, dad, and influencer, although he probably does not like being talked about. Probably the neddiest guy in Glasgow to hold an honours degree in sports science. This was an absolute pleasure to record with Mark and my co-host Dylan McGowan. Big thank you to Shanghai Tea House in Bothwell for letting us use their wonderful restaurant. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please, please, please subscribe and like the video. Share it with friends and pull your socks up. Talking about... Guys, what is happening? And welcome to another episode of the Flip the Mindset podcast, a platform of hope for people struggling with the pressures of modern day society, hope that they can get back from the darkest of places. This is episode 17, and today we're joined by gym owner and local hero, Mark Laurie, <laughs> otherwise known, as you may know him, as the Nady Scientist. What's happening, mate? How you doing, boys? All right? Is it going? You all right? Aye, buzzing, mate. Aye. Looking forward to this one. Dylan basically had the whole podcast conversation with him before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I got all my questions in before the camera came on. <laughs> I was like, save it for the camera. Uh, so what's been happening through lockdown? Tell us what you've been up to. Um, still doing a bit. Well, I've actually trained better. See, my own training. I've trained better during lockdown. I've been eating better, sleeping better. So everything's been... I've not actually see day to day. I've said this before. See day to day, lockdown doesn't really bother me. It's obviously a bit, it's a bit brutal that the gym's shut and I'm not mm. earning money. But I've got two wee boys, nine months and two year old. So I've had plenty of time with them. Do you know what I mean? My oldest boy, <coughs> he started walking last year during the big lockdown, and I was there to see it. So there's like things like that. And just the time I gave him a breakfast in the morning. So day to day, I'm busy, man. Like I'm, I'm still getting up early and training in the garage. Um, again, give the boys a breakfast, try and do a bit of work in the morning. Um, get out with the dog at lunchtime once the boys are sleeping. Um, and then um, the afternoon, I've just started doing one to ones. We've been doing one to ones in the driveway for about a month now. Um, so I'm doing that. And then night time, it's just baths, bed, bottles, bedtime stories, <laughs> all that stuff. So day to day, it just goes, just goes quickly. Aye, aye. I've been working on, working on setting up a wee fitness app as well. Um, but just dealing with the boys and other different things that are happening day to day. They are no, I'm not getting a good run at it, so I'm just chatting away at that. How's it been? Obviously, you're a gym owner, yep. successful gym owner. Um, how's it been? Just the, the whole, the whole, the whole shift change of of your gym's there, your business is thriving. Your, your gym's very much a community gym. It's got a great Aye. aspect. A lot of people are very dedicated to to you and your gym. Um, especially the four in the morning starts, man. They start <laughs> like, it's I, class. I, I'm going to, my anxiety is brutal, as you know. I'm up at four o'clock trying to get to sleep, and he's up walking the dog. You know, <laughs> going, All right, fuckers, fucking get your act together. No, I can't. You're so excited. I'm like, that anxiety is that. Pull your socks up, you weirdo. No. <laughs> <laughs> and my bed trying to get a bit of school. Oh, but but um, how's it been? Obviously, what's the shift been like for you? Um, do you know, see when I, see when it happened, right? See when the coronavirus came and we all thought everybody was going to be dying in the street and everybody panicked. When it, we actually shut down before the government said to shut down, I think they, I shut down on the Tuesday. The stuff came in on the, the kind of word started just getting spread about, and I think it was the Monday, right? We might get into lockdown, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I just thought, well, because obviously it was a big, you know, I'm not saying it's not a bad, a bad, a bad, uh, a bad virus that's going about, but I think we thought it was going to have a, a more kind of dangerous effect on everybody. Right. So at that time, I thought I've got too many people coming in here for it to, for my place to be the kind of at the centre of an outbreak. Um, I've got I've got a big kids program, a big youth program, so it's just too many families to come in. Somebody brings in that spreads from my place, then you've had it. So so I put that was a Monday on a Tuesday. I put the word out and I says, look, I'm shutting down today to decide what I'm going to do. Um, so I had it in my head. I was like, right, right what am I going to do? I um, and I went right. I'm not. I'm not going into it yet. My, my wife said, "Is you going to sit and have a think?" I says, "No, I'm going to train first. I think I went a run or something. I'm going to do some training first. I'm then going to get with the dog, and then I'm going to come in and make a decision about where I'm going to go, what, what I'm mm-hmm. going to do. So I don't know the feel good stuff first because I was like, get that done, and then you're in a good mindset, a good mind frame. 
Yeah, see, I uh, love that. I love because a lot of people probably in that situation would probably panic. Yeah. And it's that's panic doesn't get in done. I think that's panic doesn't get in done. Like you've disciplined yourself, done something aye, aye, good, aye. and you've no went. Oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. And a hundred men. What I've learned with what I've learned with business isn't coming through business. So I, just, I don't take things personally and, and just get emotions out of it aye. and just say right. Which look, I just think it rationally and see when I'm out with a dog. That's when I do all my thinking yeah, and that's aye. when things just go both 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 right. I'll do that. I've done it this morning. I had a wee couple of ideas this morning. I was like, hey, let's go, man. Aye. So I done all that and I went home and I thought, right, it's not worth it. Right, I'll just shut, I'll shut down because we thought, only thought it was going to be for a short period of yep. time, didn't yep. we? Didn't yep. <laughs> a year later, we're still going yep. to be in this. So I thought, if I need to shut for a few months, do it. If I need to go and borrow money, I'll do it. I borrowed money to start up. I borrow money, I, yep. I just let's just keep everybody Aye. safe. Um, and that was before we got told anything about grants or bounce back loans or anything like that. I just went, if I need to, if I need to borrow dough to, to survive, I'll do it. Do you yep. know what I mean? And I'll pay it back once well. So Aye. I just thought, right. And I said, right, we're shutting, I'm shutting down. I'm shutting the place down. I'm going to, we'll, going to do online stuff, we'll do Zoom stuff, blah, 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 right, everybody let's go, there's a Zoom times, let's do this. So we're all buzzing about it at the start. Aye. Six months after four <laughs> Zoom sessions every day, you're like, I'm sick of dress ups, man, going to sit and try, I'm, I'm, try to work out a, a new exercise. Aye. Um, so, I we just, um, but see, actually, once again, I got things settled into the kind of new lockdown routine last year. Uh-huh. I was like, do you know what, this is actually all right, I'm, I'm enjoying the slower pace. It gave me time to think about the business because Reflect. I was doing so many hours in the business. I wasn't thinking that, and so I was too, I was in the forest and I couldn't look at the trees. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I was too Aye. deep in. So it let me have a wee think about things. And then obviously we got started back. I'd made some changes, uh, some improvements, things that I had any, things I'd wanted to change for a while, things I wanted to update. Done that and we went back up. And then we had to shut down again. Um, so what it's, was that feeling like? I, so you've, you've, um, You've had the big reshuffle, yep. you've dealt with it quite well, you know, and then you've had the excitement of opening back up, which we thought again was going to be for a short that time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, which we thought obviously we were back, you know, the locked, no more lockdowns. And then a week's notice was it we got that you were to just close your doors again? I, was, I think it was at Christmas. I'm sure it was at Christmas because I could see it in my head. We like, could see it, couldn't we? The Christmas break yeah. was coming, aye, aye, and we could all start. We, knew, we, knew we could all start happen. thinking, "Oh no, they're opening mm-hmm. for Christmas, yeah. and we're getting aye. put right back down." Well, see, um, we 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 went to the end at Christmas, and then in my head, and I was a wee bit annoyed myself for this because in my head, I got the bounce back loans and things. So, like financially, I was like, "Right, cool, we're going to be all right. Yeah. We've had to kind of change things a bit." I'm not going to make a lot of money this year. I'm not going to make big wages, but we're going to survive. We're going to. I'm going to keep. My, we'll pay the mortgage. But pay, everything's cool. Aye, sort of thing. Cool. So don't. I'm not worried about that. Um, but in my head, I was like, right, New Year, we'll get right back at it. Get the business built mm-hmm. back up. Get everybody back in in person because the, the the Zoom sessions just died off. Mm-hmm. Pardon me. You end up with three and four wins coming on it, and then they were turning their cameras off. So I think they're just lying playing Xbox, laughing at me like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm struggling now. <laughs> and I'm like banging noises and then like going, oh, oh. so my mum and dad do stairs think they're, think they're doing a bit, do you know what I mean? So um, the numbers kind of done the talking about that. So what we've done, uh, sorry, the, so the news came out, I seen it's another lockdown for January and I was absolutely furious, man. I was abs- just I was raging. That was the one that really, really annoyed us. Yep. And I was, de- I was dead angry about it and I was like, again, had to go out with a dog and try and calm down. Mm-hmm. When I go out with a dog, it's dead. There's it's a wee kind of gold mine I got this. There's nobody about it. So I was like shouting and all that. I was just <laughs> furious, man. <laughs> Um, I, I was a wee bit annoyed with myself because I had I'd put on the eggs in one basket of opening up. I hadn't come up with it. I hadn't thought, what if we don't open up? Mm-hmm. And it's like, and having a contingency plan. So it was a fact. I was like, I don't want to get back to Zoom because it was just killing everybody's buzz and me and my two coaches. For us trying to hink up stuff. It was like nah. So I kind of calmed down. I thought, right, what were we going to do? So what we done was we just sent weekly plans out to everybody, which I think people pref- people preferred because. They didn't have to do it going at a session at a set time. Mm-hmm. And it's quite good as well because the parents, the, the parents could say to the kids, right, you've got that session, and they go, Oh, I've missed it. Whereas they could say, Have you done your homework yet? Like your homework aye, for the gym yet. Aye. Um, so people could date in their own time and it's yeah. them once the rain's on bed or whatever. Um so we get that out and we kept sending the weekly the weekly kind of mm-hmm. weekly plans out to everybody. Um and again I just settled into the routine, see as long as I can as long as I get a wee routine sorted, mm-hmm. then I'm like, right, cool, I'm happy now. You like the structure then? I like your structure, I like See, your routine, stuff, I like your structure. I, 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 me being a personal trainer like you, um, and we work in the same interest, industry Aye. to the same kind of people, um, around Glasgow, the, the Zooms, Zooms are brutal, I'm telling mm-hmm. you. 
See, bounce, we're Tough. big lads. See, bouncing about your living Tough. room. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Aye. Sweating out your box, you know, slipping in the carpet. Mm-hmm. And, I had you know, uh, during last, last year, during the summer, and it was quite clammy, it was quite warm. Aye. So I was doing them in the living room. Wendy's open and I'm in a wee new estate and there's a, there's a wee swing park of the estate is right outside my house so it's bouncing me all the way right? so I've got the tunes on I'm bouncing about Wendy's are open right blah 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 so I've kind of, and then there's a group of wee lassies about 8, 10 year old about 7 or 8 of them walking along and then they've just stopped and they're like look at that guy I could see lip red one and look at that guy so I'm like doing my ex- doing the exercise he's shouting at my phone oh, I've got the tunes on the telly yeah, and then the wee lassies are just like that bang just fiddling me <laughs> Not even hiding it. Right just on stunning trial. outside my house. <laughs> just just stunning video. And it was before them with our phones. Just video. I'm like, oh, bro, man, I'm going to be like, she's Snapchat. Or TikTok <laughs> or something. Or TikTok. I'm going to be like, what are those? I'm like, come on, man. He's oh, a chance. Yeah. Right, You've got to see the funny side. Oh, aye, 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 aye. They were, they were, they were really tough. You know, when you did, you feel like a class clown. Aye, aye. I get that as well with my neighbour Nan. And she's like, what are you going to do? It's not in that See what I find as well. Because you're doing it on your own. You've not got somebody there next. Feels even worse, if you've got somebody there you want to do it better name or uh, you're what, I found, what I found really hard at first was see when I'm taking my sessions like, at my place it's it's small group stuff mm-hmm. so you're bouncing off you're bouncing off people with the kids you're having a wee bit of banter with them you're with the, with the, with the adults you're having a laugh as well you're getting, my back, you're getting your back back so there's that there's the atmosphere yep. so that's, it's all about at my place Aye. it's all about the atmosphere the tunes are always banging everybody knows they're coming in for a, a, Aye, a it's a lift mm-hmm. it's a lift when you're on it, when I'm just I'm just doing that and I'm shouting at my phone and I'm like, they're just coming back yeah. to you because you've got you got to have them on mute aye. or else it cuts you to mute. Mm-hmm. So it was just like half aye aye aye. aye, aye sitting in, sitting in your house trying to get the motivation that you normally mm-hmm. get in a banging gym. You know, at five aye. six in the morning, that's cold at first, and you, you just that atmosphere, aye, that aye. family aye. atmosphere. And you know when you're saying something, you've got, to, you've got to bring the energy because mm-hmm. they're they're they might be coming for you after having a hard day or whatever. Other they're coming to you as they're out. So you need to be right up for it, don't Aye. you? So that's why I like being in person with people because you Aye. can, you can, Aye. What you can you feel. What you probably like, would have had as well, though. See, like that last lockdown, how frustrating mm-hmm. was that for not just like yourself as a business owner, but even just everyone in general? They were all like, "No again, no Aye. this Aye. again." Aye. So for you, you you had that, and then you had to motivate them even more because Aye. 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 they were already scun up. Yeah. So that must have been tough. It was weird. Aye. There was a there was a mad zoom out. Went no, like zoom was flying out right, for a bit, and then it just went. Aye. Didn't it? Nate was interested. Aye. People aye. were dropping like flies. Aye. And basically, I just put in my group, my PT group, because everyone just aye. happy to do their own thing. Aye. And they literally, it was as if they were gym snobs. Yeah. You know, like they're so used to yeah. their cosy gym lifting big weights. Aye. They, wouldn't, no. they, they would rather not train than aye. sit doing yeah, press ups in a living room. Aye, the power's aye. like this. It's, us. it's yeah. got to be live for me anyway. Like That's where I get my growth as a, yeah. as a human. As, off you guys, you know what I mean? The interaction with face to face, like see on Zoom, obviously I'll not go into it, but I do a fellowship right. and I got clean on Zoom, like for my drink and all aye, aye. My, my other stuff. Um, I got clean on Zoom, and at the start it was like I had to do it because it was the only way to keep me off the drink aye, and aye, that. Aye. But see, after about four or five months, the, the novelty it wore off, and it was like, mm-hmm. I need a live meeting, like, I need to see people because yeah. just looking at a screen telling people your life problems isn't really. <laughs> and then nobody comes back, you're like, why is nobody sharing it? Am I talking crap? Or aye. you just you're get like that. Should I just go out and. Should yeah. I just go out and smash a windy so I get arrested? Ah. So I just, you so become I self-conscious. So I see Jimbo and Claire, the policeman, man. Ah. At least I can talk to people. Then I'm, start, I'm looking at my phone going, oh, who's on this? No, what are they, like, what is he wearing? What, like, just self cut No, even taking in what Aye. what the whole purpose of the meeting is. Aye. It's just so, you're self-obsessed with your phone, eh? Yeah. It's just, it's horrible. So, Neddy, the Neddy scientist is what everyone knows you as. <laughs> the people that don't know your first name. You seen that Neddy scientist? I oh, stories are pure class. <laughs> so, it's, Ned is known as a very negative term. Aye. Right? How did you come up with it? Why did you come up with it? What came to it? I came up with it because it was just, a, I started off just as a pure tongue in cheek thing, right? I just started Aye. off as, if you see the very early videos, I'm just, I'm just having a laugh with everything. So, I started it because. I, was, I went and done sports science at uni, mm-hmm. but when I was at uni, I, I started uni at 30 or something, I was, I, I was a kind of a late starter with all that, I had a, a change in life, I will say, so I was there with people who were like a different generation, they were all dead young mm-hmm. for me, anyway, so I was at uni wearing a trackie and all that sort of thing, so I was there, <laughs> but I was there kicking about my trackies and just totally stood that. out, I love that, just for the kind of the lifestyle that I'd led before, obviously we'd gone to the, going to our chaos, destiny, bonkers, all that sort of shit, so, love it. it was the kind of Neddy lifestyle before, 
then went and done my sports science degree. So when I because when I, I never had social media until I started the gym, mm. and uh, so it was only like five years or something, five years ago when I started the gym. So when I started the was opened the gym, I, I had gym social media obviously, but I was putting everything out dead, kind of prim and proper, and nice and icy and dead professional, and you're getting likes off my pals, auntie, and oh, all this uh, really talking likes, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and you see when it pops up now, and you see ones, and I'm like, what? Uh, no wonder nobody wanted to come to my gym because it's just uh, fucking boring, man. Uh, uh, um, and my missus kept saying me, you need to get you out. And I was like, no, 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 I hate social media. I'll just put the gym stuff out. I don't mm. want to be on it. No, I'm a fucking... Aye. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Natural. But, aye. Uh, <laughs> don't know if I say that, but I'm just don't care. No, I just do it. Nah, you're brilliant, um, honestly. But, uh, so, I, I didn't have a social media, so I did nice and prim and proper. And then I've seen things that I was like, I want to say this, I want to say that. I want to say this, I want to say that. And I was like, do you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to start my Insta. Mm-hmm. And I just started putting stuff out and I was like kind of getting a message, but I was trying to, be, I was kind of trying to be funny and trying to be comical and yeah. trying to be a wee bit class clowny sort of thing. And, mm-hmm. But trying to put a wee kind of message across and then it was just, I started listening to different, well, I started listening to podcasts. Right. I don't know what a podcast was. I started listening to podcasts a few years ago and started getting things for them. And just one day I just done a video, like putting a wee up made a serious point. <laughs> and if you see some of the videos as well, see when I, 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 I if I ever see any older ones, I'm like, Fuck me, man, I was a bit aggressive and I was like, fuck you, man, I'm like, shit, man, calm down, mate. Um, so, when I, I just started putting them out and I was, I was waiting for a kind of, I was waiting for a slagging. So I was like, I know, like, somebody's going to slag me and say this, I say that, and I had comebacks ready. And uh, and then, I, I wasn't, and people are commenting, good stuff and all that. And then mm-hmm. I started putting my stuff out and it was wee things I was thinking, podcasts will make me think stuff or things are coming out in my head. I was putting that out, I was getting a good response. And I remember I thought I was getting like, positive comments and things like that. And then people that I didn't know started following me and I'm saying to my wife, there's a lot of people I don't know starting mm. to follow me here. And then um, a boy text a boy texts me on Insta and he says, mate, I just wanted to say, uh, he said, I've been struggling a wee bit, I've been a bit in a bad place. I said, I've not trained for months. He said, i seen your video that you put on yesterday. Um, and I went up, I got up, went in, had a cold shower, went to the gym. He said, I had a shitty session, but it's the first time I've trained in four months. And I just want to say cheers. Uh, and I didn't know how to respond. I was like, I don't know if he's taking the piss here no. or if he's sitting with pals and he's like, I'm going to bomb this guy up. Uh, Do you know what I, mean? I was like, It's a great feeling, isn't it? Ah, well, it took me a wee bit and I was like, All right, cool, mate, sounding. Like, cheers for the message. And he's like, No, I just want to say cheers. You need to keep them going. And then a wee while later, I would get, I'd get another one. And then, and then I was like, And then his message started coming in and it was like, You need to keep doing them. And then sometimes I'd stop. And just kind of leave it for a while, like I was, I was getting bored listening to myself. <laughs> um, and then uh, people were like, "Oh mate, what's happening? You alright? No, I got to get some videos back out." And I'm like, "Right, cool." So I that, that, take it back to it. It was the, uh, it was just a blend of the, the Eddie lifestyle, going to do a sports science degree, and then I just went. I was thinking, what would I call it? Because I wanted to call it some catchy. I didn't know what I just call it, Mark Laurie Fitness or Mark Specific or whatever. So I just went, "Fucking Eddie Scientist, right. man." Love it. That's what it is, man. It kind of it's weird because we do. We we obviously we're known to do similar things. We do the Aye. same thing. We're two men in Glasgow who talk about our feelings and and talk openly. Give people motivation. Mm-hmm. You come from the more um, aggressive and nerdy side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm coming from the more <laughs> mental health and kind of straight talk, nothing fancy. Uh, like ele- <laughs> the more elegant approach because it would be half me to say, you "Fuck, gonna commit suicide, you wee dick." You fucking get out of You take your satire pram and you fucking get you pull your socks up when you get you. <laughs> anyway, so it's it's just we fit in, but a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of people took to us, you know, mm-hmm. big time. Yeah. And um, when I first heard your stuff, someone was saying, this is a guy doing similar to what yeah. you do. So you just take his page, it's pure old school approach, mm-hmm. man. And everyone, you know, all class regions, we all love old school. Mm-hmm. There's aye, something aye, about aye, the old school aye. that aye. we just love. It's a bit like our grandpas and all that, isn't it? When I was at war and we were in our day and all that, we aye, just aye, like, aye. you know what I mean? See, when we used to kick about in lacrosse tracks, do you notice every time we talk about old school, our voice changes, isn't it? Do you know what I'm, t- I'm saying to you? Anyone about old school? I was like, I see back in the day, man. I was a fucking wee hard man, man. Fucking hard. <laughs> and you know, you, you just fucking, aye, aye. you just kind of put yourself in there. Did yeah. you go back to yeah. then? You aye. go back to it, don't you, when you were walking about? And uh, so, think, so, so the word Ned, right? Do you think we should, the working class should take the word back and make it a positive thing? Because there's you and a lot of other people, Graham Armstrong, who's wrote The Young Team. Aye. The offer, mm-hmm. phenomenal book. You need to read it, by the way. It is fantastic Aye. about growing up in Glasgow, or was it Glasgow or Airdrie, whatever it was, and um, going through all the madness, mm. all the Aye. drugs, all the madness. And then, you know, he's a world wide selling mm. offer. And um, with you, 
you know, the Neddy scientist has an honours degree in sports that's, science. That's, you know what I mean? Aye, so aye, it's, aye. An, it's an interesting concept, See, I thought. For, for me as well, though, it's like, your message, although it's like, Aggressive, it's fucking bang on it's the crunchy, money, and it? it's, it's just bang on, and like, it's not for everybody. I mean, my sister unfollowed uh, me, my sister hates it. She's like, and then people in my sister's work follow me uh, and they talk about it. Uh, I know some of the boys that she works with, and she's like, Oh, you need to stop this. And I was like, I should be embarrassed, but they all are, didn't they? But see, honestly, I, I said that to you before the cameras came on. I, I seen it for the first time, and I was like, What the fuck? And then I, look, <laughs> I watched the next one, me for me. I, and I watched the next one, and I thought. I'm fucking gonna do a bit. I'm gonna do a bit of action in the day. That's what it felt beca- aye, because because the mess. The first one, it was like that's quite funny. He's he's mental. That's what I thought. Aye. But see, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, you start you to hear it, the message. You? you hear the message. It's a great message, but it's direct. But it's a great message. Try listening to that when your heart's heart palpitating. Oh, what? Honestly. He's, he's, he's hooked the dog in minus five fucking oh, running about. I love it, honestly. It cheers me up. It cheers me up, man. Honestly, I've enjoyed watching them. And I'm just like, when's the next one? I, I genuinely am. Deep down, I genuinely am. That's oh, what I can't man. wait for the yeah, next one. Yeah, I think many people are the same. You have that bug. You have that... Um, you need to go on well. to know what we're talking about. You need to go on and follow him, the Nady Scientist, Mark Laurie type in or the Nady Scientist, um, and it's just great, just great kind of encapsulating videos mm-hmm. that he'll come on and he'll he'll he'll, he'll almost he, he's talking to himself, but he's talking to you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, is, it is quite cool. <clears throat> and then there was why he came on. And I swear to God, the first thirty seconds of your video, you were shouting at yourself. It was funny as hell. <laughs> I'm pissed off for this lockdown, and you know, I'm pissed off for this. <laughs> this is shite, and I've had a shite morning, this and that. And he goes, I am just, you know, that's me just getting my emotions out, guys. Not you should And then a minute too. later, it's like, have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> have a great day, guys. But it was a great video. It was aye, really aye. good because we all we all felt, feel it. We aye. all feel it. the same. Yeah. And you were just I don't even watch them back anymore. I just grab my phone. I'll dare, I'll dare the video. Bang, post it. Right, a wee quick, right, a wee quick caption or whatever. Bang, and just mm-hmm. post it. And then I'll be walking away and I'll think, oh, I don't know, but did, I, did I say that? Mm. Or did I, was that a bit shouty? Was that a bit aggressive? And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. See, that's some people might not like it. I might get some messages or people are but See, I've tried, I've done it the other night, I don't know if you've seen it on my Instagram, I tried to do a story to just say, look, we're all struggling, the end is near. But do you know, I got that self-conscious. Where did that story go? Exactly. He done three stories, and then the next one was just a written list. Just a written list because I didn't was... have the ability to keep going because it was my first time ever right, doing yeah, it. Yeah, 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 right. And I thought I looked like a twat, and I'm like, he might say this, she might say that, and then all that self obsessed. And see, rather than just who gives a fuck what people think, aye. whereas I'm no, I'm in that mindset in my day to day life. But see, for like my social media, aye. I didn't think I've got the ability to to just put it out there in the open yet. Eh? You know, so it's, it's funny because we were like that when we started as well. Aye. As you said, now you don't look at the video I don't look at any of my mm-hmm. videos anymore normally back in the day when I first had to do it I would look back I oh, just don't sound right there nah it's just Aye. it's no good enough but you or, just what, what if they take offence to this or what if they do that or what if I'm misread that way now mm. who, who gives Aye. a shit man? see when you're doing something yeah, I think see if you're like if you're whether it's social media or whether you're thinking about doing something creating something starting something mm. whatever see if you then think but what if somebody Fuck that thought, man. Just get that out of the window. Genuinely. As soon as somebody, as soon as you think, but what if people might? Fuck. I ended up doing two, and then I ended up just writing a big paragraph. (laughs) Put it on. By the way, see, to be fair, a lot of people still reached out, and it's like I done that to myself. Like I was like, why did I not just continue it, man? But I was too obsessed with. Thinking about what everybody else would think, eh? Rather such than such a great influence too. So he has, uh, you know, he's I'll get a there. lot of people look up to him. But that's the start. Uh, you actually done three videos. I was surprised that the three videos come <laughs> on. You were looking at a camera, don't you? Uh-huh. I know how just mental you are of yourself. Uh-huh. I was proud of you. Mate. I, I, was, I used when I, I done his videos at the start. I used to do them in the gym and you'd do them when I was training. And then, but it was affecting my session too much because I was positioning too the camera. Busy, uh, and sometimes I had, like, I, well, at the start, I was planning the videos, right. and I was like, right, say this and say that. So then you're thinking, and you're, then I'm stuttering, and I'm like. So see, and then I bend it. So now I just, just sometimes I'm maybe having my head like I'm going to do a wee video about this today, and then when I'm yeah. out of dog, grab my phone, I do the out. video bang, and then it's away. And other yeah. times it's just when I'm out, as I said, I do my thing when I'm out with the dog. Something comes out my head, and I go bang. That's it. And I'll just put it in my <laughs> and message, then and then I don't know about it. See, <laughs> bang away. Pull your socks up. Yeah, fuck your socks up, man. I well, love that shout, man. I honestly, did, I love it. I was the same with planning my videos. Just it does take too much time out the session, and then you get frustrated at yourself and almost ah, you just takes it away for the purpose doing as it well, when eh? your walking's better even though everyone still thinks 
what's that guy shouting he's like talking his phone for not and we're sitting there aye, you know what I mean and, all that. and then if you've done a heavy shoulder session you know I'm getting sore man you know what I mean I, <laughs> I, I, drop video like that. I was in the car doing it so I dropped the phone and that and so that's in the aye. video as well you actually like, dropped it in the video I was like this is a disaster man <laughs> cut <laughs> so we'll move on to life what was life, life like growing up for you then where'd you grow up what happened <laughs> mate I grew up in Bishop Briggs which it's not an ed area, really. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of, what you would call it, a kind of quieter area. There's that's no, that's a, no a gang or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? There's a couple of you guys that kill a gang, but uh, I don't think done much big. that. They weren't fine with them. They just hung about. But, um, so I grew up, moved there just before school, um, and then went to school and that in Bishop Briggs. So just, it was it was pretty average. It was just basic. Like, I wasn't a, wasn't a part of the cool crew. I wasn't a wee gun. I was like kind of just... In the middle. I just Aye. very average, mate. Just a normal wee guy. Aye. Went about playing football down the park with his pals. Uh, didn't play with a team or anything like that. We could play football down the park with the pals. And then started, uh, I was uh, started going to unders and that when I was about 14, 15. Started going to unders in the town. Um, started getting to know people and all that in different areas and making different pals. Um, so, and then that's when I started to kind of realise that there was kind of life outside Bishop Briggs sort of things you know yeah, what I mean so well, there was women I so he started the adventure now he started kind of turning the cotton wheel off and going and, ex- ah, and going exploring, exploring and learning learning some lessons uh, learning things <laughs> learning what the real world is about um, <laughs> women <laughs> good and bad I suppose isn't it um, I so I mean life is alright growing up man I had a uh, my mum and dad in the house, my two wee sisters. Um, everything was everything was alright until I started being a bit of a dick, I suppose. And I was, mm-hmm. about, I don't know, 15, 16, 17. What, what happened then? I just started wanting to go down that route rather than being the aye, good boy and and, uh, and sticking on the route that my mum and dad had moved us to Bishop Briggs so that obviously you don't, I don't get, in, get involved in this, that, and the next thing. And then at it's 16, 16, 17, 18, you, you start get, going out and getting involved aye. in this, that, and the next thing. Um, so I, I mean, Life is cool. Life is alright. Didn't have hunters with hunters. I love it. Like a big kind of family with uncles, aunts, cousins, grand grandpa, all that. So it was always hunters. A fa- good family, mate. I've always good kind of, as I said, plenty of love. Good, good, um, what would you call it? Role models. Yep. Good role models all about us. Aye. Like my wee granddad again, getting still in that kind of, like we were saying the old school stuff. Just like he's a proper, like a proper man, do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. things like that. My uncle, my dad, like seeing that stuff, seeing what I think, like mm-hmm. what a man should be doing. Um, so I, I mean, life, life is sound growing up. There was your usual wee skates, boys will be boys, isn't there? But <laughs> doing a podcast, it's always we always ask, we always we always kind of find out that someone has a inspirational figure who who kind of nourish them, nourishes them, and helps push them on their way to becoming a. Ha- to becoming an adult, essentially. Who was that for you? Um, probably, I suppose probably my dad, but at first, I didn't, I, I, I didn't see it. Do you know what I mean? I didn't, I wouldn't have seen it because I was in, I was rebelling. They were trying to, like, my dad doesn't drink, no drink since I was, I don't know, a wee guy. So, he didn't want me to go down boozing and all that sort of thing. So, as soon as I was 18, it was twos up, I'm out. Yep. Do you know what I mean? You can't date it. Um, so I never really, I never really drank about the streets when I was like younger. I just went to Runders. That was my thing. Yeah, I loved it. I loved the music. I loved. I got good at the dancing and all that. So that was my thing. That the was shuffles. my place. Aye, aye. You know, <laughs> 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 you guy that done all the moves and all that. Aye, 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 just in your own wee world, aye, steaming like a bubble. The hand in that. I'm moving about the dance. I'm jiving, jiving. Then I done a couple of up on the stage and then the wings. Aye, aye, aye. So and silver just fucking causing it. My dad was an MC or MC McGoo. He used to be my dad MC. Do you know MC McGoo? He done all the raves. Did he? Like Fubar, Fubar, Sterling, and that. My uncle Swifty, he was on the decks. Aye, aye, they done all. They went to all the raves. Swifty, and they get tapes playing about me. Oh, so I've got an old tape playing about my old tapes, man. Honestly, my dad will be on that. That's what he done the foo bar MC and aye. all that, man. Oh, what he's brilliant with it. He was no way, man. Oh, swear to God, mate. <laughs> That's he was. He chose. So the one bit of sense I had um, when I was moving out my mum and dad's, and I had a big box of tapes. I'm talking tapes way back in '92 and all that. I put them up my mum and dad's loft, and then years later when I came back and I was sitting in my wee room and I was like. I've got a box of tapes up here, up in the loft, man. Right up. Right up, man. Get the tapes, we can throw them all, 93 reds. Tasting the loving room. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> 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 so, 
That is brilliant, man. Have you seen a long one or not? It's different for the day, though, isn't it? Compared aye. to what it used to aye, be. Aye, aye, oh, aye. Um, There's something so, so nostalgic about it. Though. It's brilliant, oh. but it's, it's class. Yeah, what a night. See TBX, that's just nostalgia, isn't it? Uh, well, see GBX, I've got tapes for when that was out the first time, like when I was like 12, 13, ah, so early oh, 90s. Man. So I used to tape, they used to do a 20 minute power mix and they'd avoid DJs on. And uh, so I've got, and I used to record them. We'd be at my granny's on a Saturday night, and I'd be in the kitchen recording it. And that. Uh, it is such a great thing. I mean, see when GBX comes on, it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, your childhood comes back, doesn't aye, it? Aye, aye, percent, like, percent. Like in the park, we bought was a frosty jacks and <laughs> some things I'll put out and people are like, no way, on. I forgot about that or that. Like I've done it, I put a wee tune on one of my story pictures yesterday, and I'm like, I fucking forgot about that song, man. I can't believe that. What a tune that is. And it was one was an, an ultimate buzz one. And a boy went, mate, I just burst him out of my room. MC the line with that. He's like, I've not done it, I've not heard it for years, man. He's like, 37 year old, I think there's been a mistake. <laughs> that is yeah. brilliant, man. I ended up uh, being friends with this guy called DJ Crofty. Do you remember him? He was quite no. big in Glasgow. Aye, uh, when right, DJ Rankin and all that was about? Aye, it was uh, just the same time. DJ, DJ Crofty, <laughs> DJ Rankin and all that stuff. And, uh, oh, he was phenomenal. See, we, we, were, we used to be out drinking and all that and he'd be there and he would just rhyme off that same C part of man you thought you it, it was just it, cloud oh, nine wasn't brilliant. it you Aye. just thought you were all superstars and that it's, didn't a, you? it's a bit bammy eh? but it's, it's class man everybody's got it beat it everybody's got it in them man everyone's got it in them and that's Aye. why when it's CBX comes on it doesn't Aye. matter who you're with no. where you are Aye. everyone Aye. goes on the same oh, level uh, doesn't it so top you used to tag Neddy so you see were you a bit of a boy when you were 15, 16 and what was no I was still I mean, even, I, I don't know if I'd ever say I was ever a bit of a boy, mate. I think I think I just um, because obviously you grew up in Bishop Bridge, so you didn't you weren't really grown up gang fighting or anything like that. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But then I kind of I, I went down that way. We we going to Rundles and then going and meeting people with different areas and different schemes and things like that, and then going about different with different people and then progressing and then going on to the dancing, uh, like the real dancing, got to bonkers yeah. and all that, and then mm -hmm. that's when that's when you were getting into wee scuffles and sort of thing, and then that's when it it did kind of. It did kind of take, no take off, but then it was it was a kind of norm. You're going aye. to build Archeos Destiny, if you remember. I don't know, you'll not be able to. That's your dad. <laughs> aye, that's, my, that's my dad, definitely. No, me. Thing, you're going to dance like that. There was always, there was always scuffle, so aye. then it just became, I don't know, not normal, but it wasn't really a big, a big aye. thing. Um, and then, I, I mean, if the, or the, the mad wheat years, I, was, I think I was out for a full decade. I think I just... But him get changed and that, and went back out again. Four day party. Went to work for a couple. Of, <laughs> went to work for a few days and so, then went out for so the weekend. So the impact of that, the kind of party and that, is that shaped you for for what you are now? Is that kind of? I I think. What was the big change for you? Uh, I got in a bit of trouble when I was what twenty six. 25, 26. Oh, see, it's all coming out now, oh, isn't it, man? I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a bit of a boy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done 10 years. <laughs> I've done a 10 years straight. <laughs> it's just, it was other, <laughs> it was other guy. Um, I think, well, you're, you're doing that lifestyle, you're going out and partying and all that sort of thing. I mean, I wasn't happy with my day-to-day -day life, so I was always living for the weekend. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so... I was just getting through the week, like, get, get, I hate during the week, right, get through during the week, right, party time yeah. at the weekend, right, let's go, and you're blown off all that steam, Aye, because yeah. you've, because you've, you've not enjoyed your week, and you're just like, and then because you've been, because you've been mad all weekend, you're then, you're in, you're fucking hating Monday, you're like, oh, I'm rough, I just want home, yeah. I want to go to my bed, you're screaming yourself through the week, to then go and get mad with it again, to, through a week that you hate, going to a job that you hate, eating shite, <laughs> with bad, bad habits, Aye. and then, Doing it all again and just no, no growing, no going anywhere. Vicious like cycle. no, aye, aye, doing like just yeah. getting a job here and like I always worked. I never, I, I never really, I, I never did any periods where I was like kind of sponging mm. or anything. I can I always, honestly always say that there's a lot of folk right now doing exactly that. Hundred um, percent, aye. And that's I, just, I, I was that, I was that person. I've spoke about that on the suicide podcast. I was what you've just explained. I was in that vicious cycle for three, four years, aye. and it was hard to get out of because. Aye. And then it was getting to the Monday, even into the Thursday. I'm still saying I'm hating myself here. I, I genuinely, I've, I'm going nowhere in life, as you're aye. saying. And it was aye. like that weekend came, and it was like just doing the same as what you done the weekend before, sitting with the same people, talking about the same stuff, aye. and nothing changed. And, and you weren't grown as a person. If no, you were just defeated. I was defeated, man. It just, it was just horrible. Eh? And I think what you're saying is, so many people are going through that right now. Aye, so aye. many, aye. no direction. You no know, direction. It's a young thing now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, see when you look around you, right, and you be honest. Even if it's your friends, 
how many 30 to 40 year olds do you see now doing that still? Mm-hmm. I, I think it just happens, it happens less often, but mm-hmm. there's still still people I know that will have the episodes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I fucked it. I oh, was it to Monday? Oh, she's going to have her head mm-hmm. up. And you're like, Aye. they'll get to what it's like. They know they see the football on a Sunday at three o'clock. Aye. Guaranteed, man. Guaranteed, there's going to be there's going to be casualties in order. And I'm not talking like violent casualties. No. I'm talking on. Oh, oh man, they'll be sitting on Monday morning like that. Oh no, phone mm-hmm. half, no that. Aye, the horrible. Fear, it is. Which, Aye. which evidently has been leading mm-hmm. to the odd suicide. Aye, um, which we'll come on to. So moving on, looking at the links between mental health and exercise. Now you're a you're a personal trainer like myself. You're a gym owner. You're a huge fitness and kind of wellness um, advocate. Aye. How much do you personally get from staying active and looking after your nutrition? Oh, I need it. I need it. I just, I just, I just need it. It's one of my, I said that in a video, it's like one of my non-negotiables now and I believe that I train. He says, do you train every day? And I says, well, why? Apart from a Sunday, I don't train on a Sunday, but <clears throat> I need to do it. I just, and if I don't, sometimes I hit a point, you may be the same, see, because you're working in it and then you're doing it yourself, it's like if you're a kitchen fitter and you're constantly fitting kitchens all day and you're trying to fit your kitchen, <laughs> I'll be back in the morning or, or else then when you come in for work at night you laugh oh, fuck shit man so sometimes I have a wee point and I go right do you know what I'm going to take a wee calf yeah. and I just take a wee calf and just say I'll, I'll say like, just take a wee because that's a civilian and I don't I just if I want to eat something I'll eat it for like a can of ginger I'll drink it if I just mm-hmm. I just don't and then see by the end of that week I'm like I feel fucking disgusting here man mm-hmm. let's go right and get back in yeah. it again yeah. and then tidy it back up again so there's a couple of times a year that that'll, that'll happen I'll hit that point and I'm just I'm just like I'm not getting the buzz for it. Need so like, time for yourself. Stop, it's like right? shuffle because if you mm-hmm. don't, if you don't have that, same with me. Mm-hmm. I just, I just plunder into a, Aye. into a non-motivated, Aye. you know. Big, but I think you need that time. Eating machine. <laughs> you need that time to, yeah, yeah, you to, do. to kind of level yourself and give yourself a break. Aye. You Aye. do because you you're constantly helping people. You're mm-hmm. constantly. You know, I guess it, it get, can get draining. It can drain you. I think. And you lose, you lose a bit of love for it, don't you? You walk into the gym and go. I'm not lifting them dumbbells. They can, they can fuck Aye. right off, you know Aye. what I mean? And that's alright as well. See, you too. feel that low. You're, 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 I think what we need to get better at as a society is that to actually accept that it's alright to feel low at times because mm-hmm. everybody, no matter who you are, you're always going to go through a wee phase of feeling down, sad or whatever, but like, I enjoy it, no enjoy it, but I, if it's a day or two or whatever, but just body living it but I think some people if they if they do feel that low they then go oh I'm feeling dead low Aye. oh I feel like shite yep. oh, 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 I'm gonna... so but they don't where well, they don't go right well right, I feel shite so what am I going to do Aye. do you know what I'll get yeah. a big walk yep. well, there's nothing to do there's fucking hundreds Aye, there's to hundreds do. to do do you know what I mean Aye. do something I'll, I'll just sit Aye. and watch Netflix or sit and scroll through their phone Aye. and it's like Ah, it's not going to help you. No, if you're feeling like shit, go and do something. That's what I need for you. It changes message. your state. Do you know what uh, I mean? It changes your mood. We need to be accountable action. that way, you know. Mm-hmm. We just mm-hmm. need that wee bit of accountability. You need to take responsibility. Just, we think it's just going to come. You know, mm-hmm. we think, okay, I'm feeling okay, right? I deserve to be I, de- I deserve to be happy and positive right now. I deserve it all the time. Yeah. Um, I want to click my fingers and be positive. Mm-hmm. When it doesn't work like that, yeah. you know, we need to get up. We need to get moving. We need to make the necessary changes to mm-hmm. our diet. We need to sleep earlier or... Or, sleep, mm-hmm. you know, if if we're sleeping too early, stay up another hour. We might go to bed at nine o'clock. Aye. We're not actually having that downtime mm-hmm. to just really relax Aye. when we come home from work at eight and we're going to bed at nine or whatever, just to give ourselves more time. And I think, Aye. most importantly, having that week off, mm-hmm. not feeling bad for having a no. week off. Aye. See, if no. you have a couple of days off, so what? We're here for a long time, Aye. you know what I mean? Aye. You know, a couple of days off training. Nowadays, right, I train right now. I've just started training again. I train four times a week. week. <laughs> <laughs> I, train, I train four times a week, right? And that's me for a year out. A year Aye. out, I've been no training. Four times a week. Normally, you know me, I'd be seven days a week. Aye. Sometimes twice a day, mental. Yeah. Now I'm four days a week, right? And see, if I'm do, <laughs> see, see if I do three days a week, like I've done last week, I'm Aye. not beating myself up anymore. Aye. Aye. I'm Aye. chilled. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because point you know yeah. as long as I stay structured go my walks Aye. do mm-hmm. my other stuff talk to everyone Aye. check in and everyone you know what I mean I mean I disappeared for the week there you were like that what you know text me for Aye. because sometimes I just I'll, I'll take Quite myself back a bit and, time for yourself, eh? Aye. Aye, so I just think we need to we need to take that accountability everyone men and women especially men to just to, to make things happen when we're feeling low don't just expect mm-hmm. it to turn around on its Aye. own do you know what I mean I think that's where your message comes in though because Aye. yes you've got the acceptance that uh, we are going to sometimes be struggling and whatever but at the end of the day it comes down to you and aye, that's what your aye. message is get out and fucking get it done well, see I mean 
Back years ago, my mood was my mood was terrible, mm-hmm. and I just I was not I, I I just I, I, I my mood was just terrible, and I was I was get kind of stressed out about things like things like everything was shite and you think the world's against you and you're chipping mm-hmm. your shoulder. Negative. Aye, aye, aye. So you're but and I probably felt worse then. See now, like to keep my business going, to keep my house going, I've got two moves. Well, I've got I've got two wee wins. I've got I've got a lot more on my shoulders yeah. now. But I don't get stressed, I no. don't get down. I was like, I know what I need to do to keep uh, that going. And because yeah. I don't go and get mad to it anymore, because um, I keep myself feeling good by training, going out with a dog, mm-hmm. just every day out with a dog, that's me just, just letting a wee bit of steam off every day and just keeping yeah. everything cool. So I've got any non-negotiables that I do, that, uh, things I do and things I don't do. So I know that, yeah. like, that uh, see whatever I've got, all the stuff I've got on my shoulders to deal with, with the, the business overheads, the house, bills, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't get me down. No. I don't get stressed about it. I just go, right. Like, well, let's fucking deal mm-hmm. with it, man. And right. because I was, because I was mad all the time before, and I know how, I know how bad that, like, you can't think. No. See if somebody came into a party years ago and says, see in so many years time, you're going to have a, an honours degree for sports science. I mean, I was, I hated PE at school. I never played, I never played boys club football or anything like that. I never done any sport. I jumped about on my bike and, and played football in the park of my pals, but I never done any structured sport. Um, so, and I wasn't into fitness. It was only it was only when I got into trouble and cleaned up my act and I started training. And I was like, this fucking feels pretty good, man. I'm out running a Sunday morning. Like, this is fucking brilliant, man. <laughs> and uh, so because I know how that feels and how I'd obviously create a closed mind. Then see now, I'm like, right, I fucking I've opened a gym. I'm running a gym. I can do this. I've got an honours degree. So I, if somebody came into my part a party back then and says you're going to do this and going to do that, you're going to own a gym. I'd like, Get him out of here, man. He's fucking killing my boss, man. He's tripping. Fuck, man. He's nice. tripping. He's not. Because I just wasn't into it. And no. I just fitness didn't come into my... my I would yeah. I I go down to my work in the morning. I'd get three doubler rolls, two cans of ginger and a cake. You know what I mean? I ain't going to get a chip at lunchtime. You know what I mean? So, uh, just easy knowing how I felt then to uh, compare to how I feel now, and I've got men on my shoulders now to deal with, uh, that's why I try and put this message out there. Like, I'm not saying people don't go and and enjoy yourself aye I don't get enjoy action. yourself aye aye but fucking take a bit of responsibility aye. man I think we need to we need to manage ourselves more mm-hmm. aye aye men are terrible mm-hmm. at managing ourselves we're terrible at it aye. you know and I got on at someone well, not got on I tried to give someone advice the other day same situation two kids wife no good time no good time for that oh no but she'll want me to do this she'll want me to do that it says listen you're putting the fault onto her you need to then go mm-hmm. Take responsibility. Yeah, misses, right. you need to go misses or whatever, you know, Aye. misses or babe or sweetie Aye. pie or, or beautiful. Keep, or, <laughs> keep your cringe to yourself. <laughs> yeah. um, you need to say to her, listen, I need to be accountable for myself and I need some non-negotiables, babe. You know, I need to, you need to give me that 45 minutes to get my walk done. Then I'll come home, bath the babies or whatever. Aye. But I need that 45 minutes because when you're not giving me it, it's coming up, up, yep. up, up, Aye. up. And I'm coming up today and I'm drowning and it's going to erupt. And then if I do go on a bender or whatever like that, mm. then, you know, it's not, it's no one's fault, but well, it's our fault evidently but there's more chances of mm-hmm. stupid stuff like that happening when you get to boiling point you just go ah or mm-hmm. you end up fighting with someone or something like that and then they go well what's wrong well you've got to have that time so I've got to be it's got I think we've got to manage ourselves we've got to man, we've got to be more negotiable negotiable this is men and women mm-hmm. um to each other in the relationship yeah. to give ourselves that time to blow off our own scheme Aye. steam I think in relationships we're seeing it a lot men and women are scared to say to their partner Listen, I need that time to do it because they'll think, well, what's wrong with me? Why are you not spending mm-hmm. time with me? Or I need you to be there for that when we don't just go, have your time out. Go aye, and aye, have aye. your walk. I just got up you early. Know? I just got up aye, early and before the, before the house is up. Aye. And even do it just now with the lockdown, I've done this wee thing. Um, it was a wee online course, but Jed Neil done it, Dynamic Creations. Put on this wee online, put together this wee online course and it's just about a wee breathing technique and then planning your day in your head. That's a kind of long story short. So I'm doing that now. I get up in the morning. I do that, and I plan the day in my head and how I want to, how I want the, the kind of things to go and how I how I think I would deal with it best, mm-hmm. and just do all that in my head. Do a wee breathing exercise, and then I'm doing a I'm doing a wee NLP course, a wee online course. So I do a wee bit of that, and then I get into the garage. I train. I come back in, and I'm and I'm, I'm up for well. I'm there for getting the boys. So my youngest is still getting breastfed. So my missus is up and down with him. He's teething as well. So she's up with him a bit during the night. Um, so I'm then. And we just kind of restructured this so that I, I, cause I always wanted to do this. Uh, I was still wanting to do this stuff in the morning. But then Kirsty was then having to go up and do the boys' breakfast and things like that. And she was like, no, I had a great sleep. So I said, right, how are we going to do this? What do you need for me? 
I want you to do the boys breakfast so it can let me sleep on a bit. I said, right, fine. Well, I'm going to, I'll just shift that back and I'm getting up earlier to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting up at just before five, you know, doing that and then training for a bit and then going in. I'm going to get, I'm, I'm wanting to work it back and work it back a wee bit so that I'm getting a wee bit more done in the morning. But it's, it's just, aye, it's just sitting and communicating. Like, what, do you, what do you need for me? Mm-hmm. I need you to do that and I like to do that. Right, see so my stuff, I'll do my stuff then, then and then. Aye. That aye. right there. I it's, think you need to talk about that more on your page because I think you can help so many, so many couples, mate. And aye, I, and I, I always true. took it from you that way. And sometimes I go to mama and says, listen, we need to, go, mm-hmm. we need to meet in the middle here because mm-hmm. too many of our fallouts are because you need time for that and I'm mm-hmm. saying no because I'm stressed with a wee man aye, aye, and aye, I need time aye. for this and you're saying no because mm-hmm. you want me to do this and that. There's nothing wrong with just planning it. No. 50-50, like, what have aye. you got? What's your passion, right? Right, Mark, you go to the gym, right? You obviously mm-hmm. need to be there at that time. You go your walk. You need that because it keeps you level for mm-hmm. me and the kids. Aye, you know, aye. she needs her sleep in because she's shattered. Aye, you know, aye. and her boobs are probably killing her. You know what I mean? <laughs> and her body's just been aye. through... The horrors, because I've seen that shit. Have you been talking to my missus, mate? I've seen that shit. It's yeah. no nice, do you know what I mean? Yeah, what yeah. they have to go through. You know, and we need to get that respect for each it's other more. It's just communication, isn't it? I, I think, know Because we are seeing many men as well who are in relationships take their own life. Mm-hmm. Many, many of them that are taking mm-hmm. their own life have got a wife or a mm-hmm. missus, and a lot of them have got kids. Right. So we need to get this... Mm-hmm. We need to get this balance where we teach our men to maybe mm-hmm. open up more and teach our men to maybe be more accountable is easy because mm-hmm. we just shout at people as personal trainers, don't we? Be more accountable <laughs> instead of how do you manage nah. your life? How nah, do you nah. actually do it? We're not mm-hmm. taught at the school. Structure, school we're taught if we don't get a degree, nah. we're fucked. Nah. It really isn't the case, you know? Nah. Um, so being a dad, your dad nah. now, I'm a dad. I'm, I'm he's going to be, be a dad. <laughs> so Probably. He's expecting, so welcome to the team. Nah. So, you know, Dad, now how much do you think this lockdown is going to impact our future generations? Uh, I think the kids will probably go over it quicker than the adults will. I think the adults will hang on to it for a while and go, oh, but it was because of lockdown. This fucked my well, lockdown, fucked me for this, or lockdown, fucked me for that. All right, fair enough. Some people might have their businesses been affected, their jobs been affected. So, they, they just need, they, they will, uh, I suppose I'm quite harsh and blank white with that. You just need to adapt and you need to change. And, my business has been shut for nearly a year. Well, we about opened and closed here, there, here and there, but I'm fucking dealing with it. Um, but my, I, to use a personal example, my wee boy, uh, Johnny, the oldest one, he's two now. We got locked down two or three days after his first birthday. So all his wee classes, baby centuries, we what do you call it, his wee swimming club and all that, wee water babies or whatever it's called. All that stopped. And all the kind of their interaction, all the wee social side of things, all that mm-hmm. stopped. They weren't going to parks, I think. So he mm-hmm. bas- Johnny basically grew up in the back garden with a dog. So, and he, being the oldest, there was no siblings. I don't have really, I, there's no kids in my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, my pals, Wayne's, most of them are all older as well. So there was, there was no kind of, he wasn't mingling with our Wayne's. So his speech was they coming on as well as it should. I mean, I mean, he can climb fences and he can <laughs> roll about with a dog. He can, he can, he, he can run about. He can run about the garden, dribbling the football. Man, you might see my football; it's unbelievable. <laughs> but um, it just the, he's so, the social side of things. Because even when the when the restrictions eased last year, um, and my mum and dad came over and they were in the garden, he was like, "Can I just stare at my mum and dad?" And he's like, "Just you know, so no, he took my bee eye, eye." But see, if you're about walking about in the estate. See if he sees a dog, he's right there to dog. Yeah. But he sees he's seen other kids and he was a bit kinda mm, wasn't mm-hmm. sure. He's coming on now and he's in nursery and we got a, a girl that I used to work with, she's a speech therapist now. So she was doing some Zoom sessions with us for the for just some wee kind of strategies and some wee techniques just to help to help bring on his speech, yeah. aye. And she says, Look, she said, I'm not worried about anything, but there will be, his kids, his age group will be affected by mm-hmm. by this lockdown. But I, I think the whole thing eh? because they they don't I don't think they take in take it in as much. I, I see what you're meaning with the uh, like staring and stuff like that because my friends, my best mates, um, we one, he's the exact same. He's brilliant. He runs about and all that. Aye. But like, see when there's like that, maybe four or five people, it's like, oh, like they didn't know what to do much. because they've not got the awareness aye. or aye. they've just never dealt aye. with. It and he's, it's the same when he goes to the park. It's aye. like he'll run away through the like aye, aye, he'll run aye, away aye, rather aye. than running into the, the I think sand the, pit and stuff like that. The older ones for talking to the parents for the, the kids that come to mind. I think a lot of the older ones, the majority of them, I would say, just went both feet up Xbox. And I think, like, <laughs> see, talking to the ones at my place, it's like, see, during the summer holidays, they're in training. Now, like, what'd you get up to the day? Nothing. Just, uh, I'll be coming at, like, four o'clock, and I'm like, are you no long up? 
I just got up there, I was up to like six playing Call of Duty or something. So I'm like, easy. what? <laughs> and then I was like, so what are you doing tomorrow? Are you going in for your money? I said to him, yeah, you're going for your pals tonight or something. He's like, go in for my pals. It's a bit weird, isn't it? And I was like, he's like, I was phoning him, I messaged him, and I was like, you know, just going, chat the door, man, you coming out? You get a football here? That's what it used to be like, it's not like that, is it? Our generation, they kind of, the default would have been summer holidays or whatever it was, you got up, you get ready, you went out, and you went chatting doors, you go to the girl and says, right, what are we doing? Aye. Mom, right, we're going to get a big game of football, Mom, we'll go a bike run, or Mom, we're going to do, do whatever. Aye. We'll go to the pictures, we'll go... Uh, you hardly see that. But they don't do that. They yeah. only, so we went out first and chatting doors and got everybody together and said, right, what are we doing? Aye. Whereas they will lie and text each other, wouldn't they, and say, do you want to do it? Nah, I can't board, can't I board, nah, I'll fuck that's it. That. It's, it's, do you want to do Nando's? I actually a big one. I would have had dad in the morning, that's for 30, 40, 50 quid now, but if we were getting two pounds or something, see if we can go to Nando's, we can put a good picture on, man, and then, then we'll update the Instagrams, man, and then we'll go home. Aye, then we'll go home. Can unreal. No, I, I, I resonate with the year with the 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 wee man with his speech. Now, my baby was too young for the the speech impact, but because we used to talk about because you were a dad and I'd just had mine as aye, well. Aye. We didn't have them. We didn't have them obviously. <laughs> um, but I, he was the same when people came in because he didn't see anyone. My mum seen him for the third time or the second time yesterday. Aye. And uh, I remember Dylan came in one time and. Um, he just kind of... My wee boy was a wee bit away. He was fine with his speech. He looked at me and he was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was... Uh, he was. I could see it a lot. You know, he was like, whoa. Is that people? Aye. Whoa, you know what I mean? It's a shame, but... He's looking at, he's looking at all, the, all the men walking in and he's going... Why's my daddy a different colour than them? <laughs> 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 I remember Nathan Diasha came to visit, right? This was funny. Is it? Nathan Diasha came to visit after the podcast, right? Aye. And obviously, my wee boy's never seen another black guy. Aye. And he came up, Nathan Diasha, and my boy put the arms out. I swear, Aye. on my brother's grave. My wee son put my arms out to Nathan Diasha, and I'm just looking at Steph and going, oh, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know what I mean? And it was amazing. Nathan held him and everything. My wee boy was right up to him, and Aye, I thought, he obviously thought he was me or what? Aye, I don't know, Aye. but it was just, it's, the kids are brilliant, aren't they? Aye, Aye. They're so. They adapt, I think. They adapt, man. Aye. They do, so, the word Ned is basically a dig. You know what the one educated delinquent and that's how it's a kind of laugh. Non-educated like, delinquent. Mm-hmm. But the Neddy scientist has a degree as we've talked about, <laughs> right? So you've told us kind of how you came from it, but let's talk to anyone else who's maybe had a life for the schemes or anything like that. You weren't exactly from the schemes, but you nah. know what I mean. I had a life and it's maybe um not a Ned, but we talk about mm. being being just boys will be boys, just, aren't boys, aye, just being a boy, all wear. Do you know aye. what I mean? Is it on for them to go and get their degree? Man. What, what would you say to them? I see. Because I went, I'm, I went to college at first, so I went to college. It got me, it got me kind of. I got the ball on the deck. Went to college, got a bit of structure. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed the fitness thing. Everything made sense to us. I was like, I'm fucking, I'm good at this. Mm-hmm. I'm getting something. I'm making sense. I'm, I, I'm understanding here. I was answering things. And it was just talking to one of my lecturers who was the same age as us. So we used to, out of class, we used to just sit and talk to him, like, we were pals sort of thing, in class, game his place. Um, but, and he was, uh, he was working at St. Mern at the time, in strength conditioning, I was talking to him about it. And, he, and I said, he said, are you need to go to the sports science degree? I said, I he said, well, why don't you? And I'm like, mate, I'm fucking nearly 30. I'm going to finish unit 30. I just need to go and get a job. I need to get my man dad's. That was just my, I was buying my man dad's house. And it's like, so I need out of here, do you know what I mean? I'm a grown man, do you know what I mean? Um, so then, I, it was the, the thought of going to uni, I was like, and I went, do you know what, fuck it. I mean, I had half a brain at school, I just didn't use it. Got to, I'd done all right in fourth year, and then fifth year, I just went, fuck that, my head was, my head was Gone. in. And I, and I'll be able to, I'll be able to, I'll be able to dancing. Uh, so, I think it, what I would say is you would, you really need to want to do it. You really need to want to do it. You really need to want to be there, because uni isn't, uni isn't easy. Uni's no... Especially being older, there's no social life there. I was there for, as I, I said to a few people, I said, I'm here for real, it's my fucking last chance here. Mm-hmm. You would then group up with people, and I was like, going to stop fucking about. We need to get this done. Yeah, I... So, you, one thing you really need to want to do it, and it needs to be, you can't just say, oh, I fancy doing that course, because it's it's hard, it takes a lot of your time. Mm-hmm. You you need to do things when you don't want to do it, and sitting, uh, putting your work together, you're doing your reports, your, your, uh, your essays, whatever, your research. 
some of it just doesn't make sense. You've really got to think, right, fucking break it down. So you really need to want to do it, but there's nothing that, I mean, there's nothing that can stop you. People may say, oh, but he's for Bishop Briggs. People for Bishop Briggs go to Guinea. I, I stayed in Bishop Briggs. I fucking hung about, hung about everywhere else. I hung about all Ireland off end. So, Bishop Briggs is, isn't isn't kind of what it's, what they say. It does. There's a wee part of it that's good. Aye. You know, it's just a I mean, mix. I there and I walk through it. I do my hour and a half walk through Bishop Briggs every night, and there's there's a wee part that's nice, and the rest of it's just the same just as anywhere. Anywhere, aye, you know aye, what I mean? Aye. In Glasgow, it's all the same. Um, so. I would say it's, it's, it's there for you to go and do it. I mean, like, like, you get one fucking crack at it, and that's the way I see it, man. Like, um, I, I, when I was at uni, was I, was I still at uni? I just, I think I was, I can't remember, but anyway, I think I just finished, I just finished uni, just finished uni, and I was thinking about what am I doing? I was chasing a job in football, I was applying everywhere, I was in the heart, and I still think I was quite positive, I was training and all that, and I was on a good, I was on a, like, on a good path. Um, and then my, one of my mates that I worked with, he died, just suddenly, just just gone, and that made me think. I went like, right, just take stock here, man. Like fucking hell, like it's it could be over. It could be over in fucking two years. Yeah. Are you gonna go in two years? To, if you if you know you've got two years to go, what are you gonna do? And that's when I went right. Fuck this. Going for it. I am going for it. And I started planning the business. Right. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Uh, and then I met <clears throat> I met Kirsty. Somebody was trying to set me up with my wife. And I kept saying no, no, fuck that. That's it. that that. Uh, Getting the thing we're in set ups and all that, it's just embar- no embarrassing, but awkward and all that. Mm-hmm. And I went, fuck it, I'm going to go and see that, I say. Went in then fucking five yeah, months yeah. later or something, we've done well, and then we're married like a year later and that. So that just made me think, right, what are you going to do? If you if, if it could be over soon, or are you going to get to, you're going to get to your, when your number's called and you're an old guy and you go, fuck man, I, I wish I'd done, done that. that. I wish I'd done that. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's it. So that just that was a that was a big I mean that was a quite a tough point obviously, but that was a, a point when that was a big change and I just thought, right, let's look at things differently here, man. Like Why do you think it always takes that big life changing situation, like someone close to us dies or we nearly die or it's a big divorce or a split up or a huge accident or something like that to make us I think make it's the like an electric shock days. or something. because mm. it just yeah. kinda because I said when I when I was like 25, 26 and I got into trouble, that was a boof, mm-hmm. right? Fucking hell. And then you've got time to go and think and you're like, right, and you're taking stock of things and it just kind of hits you. Hits you, aye, and you go, right, mm-hmm. boom, that's not uh, happening anymore. Yeah. We're going that aye. way. Um, and you, and you start, start pursuing that. And as I said, I said that in a video, when that happened, and I started going to, I started kind of moving forward and going to like, going to college and the fitness and mm-hmm. your training and all that. And as I said, I didn't know exactly where I was going with that, but I knew I was on a, I knew I was on a path that I was enjoying and a, and a better path that was going to have a better future. Yep. I didn't know where it, where it, where the end point yeah. was, but I knew where I was moving away from. Aye. Aye. Uh, and I just and I just kept going. That with was, it. That's it's a rock bottom for me. That's I spoke about that as well. It's like when you hit the the rock bottom, it's the realization that I'm going to end up fucked myself, aye, aye. Um, or worse, or no be here, aye. or I need to fucking change. But the hope is you've quite fucking openly said is you need to put the action in and that was what it was like for me it's like I can't go down this road anymore aye, 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 I am aye. fucked aye. and it's it, it was horrible it's like a dark lonely place and it's like I need to fucking but it's only, it's only you I think that aye. can change it it's only aye. you that and I think that's when you that's when you do you need to pull your socks up you need to hang right let's aye. let's fucking get something going that's here. what I've done the last fucking nine months because you know when I finished when I finished uni that was five and a half years of studying mm-hmm. boo mm-hmm. What did I do now? I wasn't even going to go to graduation, I was yeah. bothered. Like, I'd like one boy, I was pal about uni, and I was like, so I was nearly like, oh, it's graduating, let's all do it, and all that sort of thing. I wasn't a part of that. I went to uni, went away, and went back to the hard. So, talk a wee bit more about, you're into combat sports, and you, you like your boxing. Aye, aye, I like a wee bit of the boxing, aye. Um, yeah. You're always on that boxing where you're, you're like, do you, you put stuff on, like, who's going to win the boxing and be combos and all that? Eh, uh, sometimes I'll stick a wee bit on if I'm watching, if I'm watching something, I'll put a wee bit on. Um, do you, what do you think of these YouTubers getting into the boxing world? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he won last night, didn't he? Aye, aye, aye. It was a, it was a UFC guy who said that. Aye, aye, aye. I think it was Askin. He was aye, telling um, he's some amount of money. That Paul. Do you know what? I mean, as a boxing purist, like I, I, I like everybody. Everybody's into the, the MMA and the, and the UFC. Um, I'm, I'm a bit like a couple of characters with it. So like in Ganu. 
Well, if you're listening to this podcast, we just we draw over. Uh, so you just yeah. watch and love boxing. I, I like boxing. I have always liked boxing. Even when I was a wee guy, I remember sitting up watching. But my dad would let me sit up late. Like we'd have to. I kid when I was going to my bed, so my wee sister would go to her bed, and then I I'd get up and do the stair and I could sit and watch <laughs> the boxing. And then you're all excited. You felt all done. Like, that. Uh, it was a big treat. Aye. So I've always I grew up watching it, um, and I've always just liked the boxing. And um, when I started uh, getting into the fitness now, and then I had a wee go at it, uh, just going up to the wee amateur club and getting punched about half a ten stoners, man. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Um, many as are in here, man. <laughs> uh, so I, I just I like the fitness. I like the old school training. I like that. Uh, it was just good. It was just good, man. Like looking like, at just old school, no, no frills that you could. It was just, you could smell it in there, do you know what I mean? I like that, so um, I don't I don't want I don't got the club anymore, so I just know I'm gonna know the yeah. time man, I need to remind place and that's it. But um last lockdown I hung a bag, there's a wee there's a wee field there behind my house, so I hung a bag of funny trees and I was out there part the bag about and that to stay sharp and um a disciplined sport as well, but oh, yeah, I, I mean I was I'll say like I've got the I've got the bag of Linux loose, my ball at Leona loose. Long for that. I had a bag of world champ. It's weird because obviously, yeah, you, do, do you think it devalues, you know, boxing that these guys are training for no. a couple of years, you know, I and then creating big, big million pound PPV. And one way I can, I can see like so say I know a couple of young I know a couple of young pro boys who've obviously went through the ranks for amateurs who've had. Hunter amateur fights, they've fought out here, there and everywhere. They've then they've then turned pro, they're they're choking to get a fight, they're trying to they're trying to get up the ladder. And then, and then they just see somebody coming in who's getting a big who's getting a pay per view. Aye. Mm-hmm. So I can see their point of view that I would I would be annoyed with that. Definitely. I, I just look at it just as a kind of person and just say, but me will well done to them, man. They've stepped to the ropes. Mm-hmm. They're going in and they're having a pro fight in front of cameras and all that. I had a, I had a fight organised that never happened, so my, my nose got broken a week before it. But I never even told my pals. I never, because I just wanted to have one fight just to say, listen, I've, I've done something. But I never even told my pals. I never told them because I didn't want them to do that. No. I just wanted to go and do it. And then that was that. In case I get sparked out in the floor, so I never even slaughtered <laughs> But, um, so they, I mean, they guys, they're, they're stepping out of the ropes, they're getting in there, they're doing the training. They've built up their own profile as a YouTuber, they've not built up, no. but they are going and doing it. So, in one, in one side, yeah, I go, well, fair play fair to you. Play. You've, you've done the work to build up your profile and people want to see it. Yeah. Boxing fans might not want to see it. No. YouTubers and the, like the YouTube fans might want to go and watch them. See, you're right because I think it's fair play as well. It does devalue the boxing and that, but it also shows what can be done. And and maybe if boxers should broaden their horizons as a young boy and go into many sports like boxing and then other combat sports because these guys are going in like your Jake Paul and showing not bad boxing attributes. Boxing attributes are on par with some of these top amateurs Aye. that go in and don't have a Aye. career. And it shows that, one, it shows that the whole boxing thing I've been noticing now, I, get, I feel like I love weight because it's camaraderie now. Mm. It's like a circus now. It's like, oh, I'll Aye. beat you and I'll see this to you and that. Show. And they're only fighting and they're in. They're not battering Aye. each other on the street. No. They'll just get the gloves on. And it's, it's a conditioned sport Aye. that they bring all this camaraderie to do. Mm. Like, I'm going to punch my face in and all that crap. And mm. who, all this all this kind of screening up to each other and all the stuff Aye. that doesn't happen. Talking shit on TV that everyone buys up to. It's our fault we get into that. But what happened was with MMA and boxing, right, there was a mass influx of n- unpure boxing fans, would you say? Because right. you get your purists who love aye. boxing aye. and just aye. study it and they're boxing mad. You know, they're raging about these YouTubers. But oh, you get all, aye, aye, aye. there was like millions of people who jumped, just jumped on the pay-per-view bandwagon aye. right now from YouTube, from MMA, from everything, just to watch a hype up fight, you get aye, you get aye. people who aren't even boxing fans all sitting in the room steaming, don't you, on a Saturday night oh, aye, at aye, a party aye, aye. watching these big matches because they fall in love with the, the person, brand the of the person. Aye, do you know what I mean? Aye, aye, aye. So you've got to understand that, and that's what brings the money now. Mm. So it is that way where you're thinking, well, fair play, mm. you pay to watch aye. them. You'll moan about the it, and you're, example, I guarantee aye. you'll pay to watch them. The biggest example of that is uh, Conor, McGregor Conor McGregor fighting. Yeah. Um, who did they fight again? Floyd Mayweather. Like, aye, aye, aye. Going aye. to the UFC yeah. to box and to fight, and that yeah, was well, not I, never, just I never watched any UFC until Conor McGregor came on the scene. And somebody, I mean, somebody said to me, Have you seen this guy? You heard of this guy, Conor McGregor? I went, No, who's that? UFC fighter, Irish guy. He's like, Go on YouTube him. And it was when he was fighting Jose Aldo. So I didn't aye. know, because I didn't follow the UFC no. stuff. And it was when he was fighting Jose Aldo. 
and I've got a YouTube to hang me a YouTube and I was watching the press conferences grabbing the oh. belt off him and all that and I'm like aye that was all so class, he's a character everybody aye. knows who Conor McGregor is he's a money maker isn't aye, he so it, I, everybody wants to fight if him he's for on, that I don't start up to four and five in the morning no. for any fights no. no. they start fucking god man aye. so I'll just record that aye. but I watch him I watch Darn Till and I watch mm. Francis and Gano. Aye, because I know he's the I know the characters aye. of them. You just like, like the personality. And Gano's don't story you? is yeah. just fucking unbelievable. Darren man. Still's good as well. Aye, 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 his aye. story like the, the Darren other Till's un, he's um, he's unhinged on the new innings. He's mental. Aye. He's just oh, he's, 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 he's a character. He's, he's just, just watching. Him. He's literally you want to watch him and listen to him and stirring pots everywhere. He's great. He's a great guy. But that's what some of these folk are in it for as well. That's the passion of the sport. You watch him. You buy his stuff. You. They, so they've built that profile do you know aye. what I mean so the, and the, so whether it's you're a not, brand I'm not, I, I'm not a big MMA fan no. but I, 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 I like them aye I follow him and Conor McGregor Conor well. absolutely exploited the market oh. didn't he he came in exploited the market made aye. more money than sense aye. he's bigger than the and US and he just left aye. for a while didn't aye. he aye. and he he's was just brilliant. carrying the UFC aye. 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 but it's it's, it's it's quite incredible but because there's probably people who are better fighters aye. than him but they've got no personality they person a fucking phone book what you see is happening now though right there's pay per few events now getting more views than a lot of the best boxing fights mm-hmm. like Justin Bieber is going to fight Kanye yeah. West and all that kind of crap that's coming <laughs> out there you know what I mean all these is that just an example just, or is that actually happening <laughs> just two, no no I hope that's an example <laughs> but you can see it you could, aye, you could see aye, it happening couldn't aye. you just people out of nowhere a guy from Neighbours is fighting a guy from EastEnders you know what I mean it's all money aye, yeah. and then everyone jumps in the bandwagon so we create our own demise don't mm-hmm. we we create our own change well, people moan about the, the pay-per-views and I'm like well boycott them then aye. don't pay it mm-hmm. don't know don't like it's the it's the or there was like somebody who was doing a, a what do you call it an appearance at a nightclub and he was he was like getting ten grand I was like well it's mm-hmm. it's the it's the public for, it's the public who is responsible for putting that person on yeah, a pedestal exactly yeah. it's on a pedestal that's for? what we spoke about uh, before it's like all these like programs like the Love Islands and all that we're get we're speaking about them on Twitter or whatever social media platform it is we're actually giving the, we're promoting them aye, aye, because aye. we're talking about them that much yeah. we're tweeting about them that much that mm-hmm. their profile has just gone from there to there aye, all because aye. of us yeah. it's all yeah. us just talking about them who do you think is going to win the Joshua and Fury fight? Fury all day long I don't know man I'd... Fury Fury's a boxer eh? I I don't know I think it would be funny in the run up because I think Fury will then try and get in his head won't he and I think he's e- he can easy do but it. Cause... I think so, aye. But I think Big Josh keeps that clean cut corporate aye. persona, didn't he? Aye. But I think behind the scenes, he's he's no he's not he's not as kind of he's not as clean cut as. He's he a character as well, though. So I he? think he's got that kind of he's got that skin boy in him. Oh, aye. Joshua, so I think he'll get he'll get angry and aye. Um, where he can take that or where he gives him it back. Because I remember he, Joshua was talking about there was on it was something on Twitter and thing me Tyson was giving him a bit. It was a couple of years ago. And he was in the motor, they were going to a training camp or something, and he's like, I usually I just let hands go, but he started saying, I'm like, hold on a minute, oh, you, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, call me the wrong moment with Dr. Dre on, man, this feeling for like, the guy's turning the motor on the boys, man. I was like, they fucking hold on a minute. And it's the that. first time that he kind of, he kind of let crack for that. Shell. that he came with the I think Fury's got that as well, though. I think Fury's, I just think, I, think I just still. idolise him for, for yeah. where he came, like, all the suicide stuff and, yeah, and all that stuff, and where he is today, and all the weight loss, and... I just think he's a good example to like the younger generation looking up that if mm-hmm. a, a big grown man boxer who can Aye. box anybody in the world can feel that low. Yeah. Um, I've been trying, so Fury, been trying to get Fury on the podcast for ages. Um, you know, I think he'd be great. He was on Paul, Paul Mortimer's, do you follow him? No. Huh? He's a world worldwide known um, kind of life coach, motivational coach. He went on that and he was really, really good on it. Mm-hmm. He, he opened up, but not fully. Mm-hmm. He was guarded on so many things, so yeah. I don't know if he still maybe has a lot of issues or or that, but he's just an no. epitome of, he's just a great, mm-hmm. I, I love watching him. Um, jo, I think Josh will beat him. Do you? Aye. Uh, you think Josh will beat him as well? I think Josh will I think, do you know what? I don't, I, I don't think you can say any, I, well, I no. couldn't say either way. I couldn't hang my hat in either because no. I think. I don't think I'll put a bait on it. No. But nah. Cause that's Dying what, by Josh hits like a train, doesn't he? Aye. Joshua hits like a train, right? Fury's Fury's the dancer, isn't he? He's just, he's just a he's, phenomenal he's just boxer. Awkward, doesn't he, man? Aye, Fury's just awkward and he's just a he's just Joshua for that re- and The thing is, Joshua Wright was going well until Wright gassed him. Remember Wright hit him? Let's be honest, Wright should have bet Joshua. Do you remember Wright hit Joshua Who? and Joshua gassed a uh, Damien? White, sorry. Remember he hit Joshua and Joshua gassed? Aye. And he, White just stood off him. Aye. 
yeah. instead of going in and just beating him. Uh, he uh, would uh, have uh, beaten uh, him. Uh, and then Joshua came back. I mm. thought, luckily, I thought White was better than them all. To be honest, I think he will come back. I think he will come back and beat a few of them because he's, yeah. he's on. He's on it now. He's he back up, but when you seen when you seen Bagdalian fighting, um, who was it? The big Russian. He just he just rematched there. Yeah, I, I, it was I much more. That. It was much more measured uh, than yeah. and uh, picking his shots and just. Aye. more, more it was more disciplined in regards to like actual boxing. I think he's back. I also think he had a bit of bad luck. He was caught a few times. Just a wee bit. Boxing has a huge bit of luck in it with. With maybe well, you could call it luck, couldn't you? Sometimes if you're caught at the wrong time and uh, the wrong balance, you know, you're bang. maybe just off balance. You're, I yeah, just think night, um, Fury getting up for the fight with who did they fight? The Wilder. Aye, Wilder. Aye, aye, aye. And he looked out and he just. And he gets that back was phenomenal, up. That's, that's why I think that it's no trains, matter what Joshua it? hits him, with, Do you not notice he'll it? get back up. Boxing goes on trains. It's us. We follow mm-hmm. trains. See, when mm-hmm. someone's flown, like Fury, the whole world flew onto him. Aye. Aye. See, when Joshua was flown at first, we flew mm-hmm. onto aye, Joshua. Aye, aye, aye. Then see, when um, Conor McGregor, we mm-hmm. all flew onto aye, him. Aye. So I just don't know. Mm-hmm. I, somet- I try not to get caught up in it all too much and just say. I love the heavyweight, though. Heavyweight oh, I love heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. it's entertaining. It's mere entertaining. Love it. it. I love the, the the way you can just get knocked out. Do you think? <laughs> like, you know that way where you're just you know a big knockout's coming for the big fat huge. That hands, wouldn't happen to me, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to talk to you about um, taking care of your body. Right. Proper recovery from injury, which is a big one these days. I got a lot of messages off young footballers and sports athletes, right. semi pro or pro, about um, about recovering from injury and yep. they don't know anything about it basically and the pressures of training through injury is another one which I train through my knees because they want to hold a deal don't they or they want to uh, get another deal mm-hmm. yeah exactly so what's your opinion on this uh, well I do a rehab I, do, I run a rehab group at my place so it's for it's basically for it's mainly footballers who have come back who have had a like an injury bone fracture that sort of thing so I, I do I'll not do the sales pitch, but everybody gets a personalised programme on it. But we're on everybody's in a group, but they've all got their personalised programme and they're, they're basically on a return to play sort of kind of structure. But there's, there's I think I think some clubs are let down, they'll let their players down, but it's just a Scottish football, it's a lack of facilities. Mm-hmm. You've got one physio who's today hunters of stuff, who's to, maybe helping in the warm up or who's who's trying to treat players and they're just they're over overworked, aren't they? They don't have they don't have enough. So uh, and I think with the lack of opportunities in Scottish football, people are trying to hold on to a deal, aren't they? Or they're chasing another deal, so they maybe want to play through their injuries. Um, and probably a wee bit of lack of, lack of knowledge. Um, probably got a wee bit of lack of knowledge and maybe a lack of education on how to properly look after the body. And maybe some boys that play football are a bit just too bored in the football lifestyle, aren't they? <laughs> so they're no, uh, they wouldn't listen to it until they get older and they go, I, I mean, how many, how many, can have boys towards the end of their career or when their career's done go I wish I'd done that at the start of my career I wish I'd known that I yeah, wish I'd but yeah. would they have listened at the start never would they have listened do you know what I mean footballers have got that arrogant mentality I said um, I was working with a kind of low level team so I said look boys I was there to do, do the fitness aspect really mm. uh, so and so's got my number I'm no, I just I'll make it easy for you so and so and so and so's got my number give me a phone and give me a text and I'll help you I, was, I think I was at uni or college at the time so I was just keen as fuck when I I was like, give me, a, give me a phone or a text and I'll help you. If there's something you're lacking, something you feel I, would, I, want, I want to get stronger here or I want to, something you want to improve, I get five, six messages. Big man, I'm going to be for the summer, man. What's the best way to get a six pack? Big man, how do I get my arms bigger? Blah, blah, blah. And I was yeah. like, not one of them <laughs> said, I want to get up the levels. Mm-hmm. I want to get faster. I want to get sharper. I want to get stronger. I want to get quicker yeah. off the mark. I want to get stronger on the I ball. It's instant. I've, I, they just, it was just, I want, to, I want it to look better. See, I mm-hmm. got it off Greg Wilde, we Wilde, and another couple of players just, big man, how'd I get a six pack for summer? I was like, you should be focusing on how to get rid of the belly for your football. Aye. Mm-hmm. Get rid of the belly, get into shape. We roadrunner. And we Wilde, you, you could be better <laughs> and, have a, and have a better career. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Aye. But instead you'd ask me, a six week plan to go to Ibiza what do you care about do you care about just looking good in front of people they want that they instant result holidays, really. they just think that you can just click the finger why don't you get better for your profession mm-hmm. and then feel better in yourself mm-hmm. playing your football you know when I was at football I felt the pressure to train and play through injuries I was under a lot of pressure and it's not that I didn't listen it's because the way my mental health was at the time I, I listened too much I just listened to them too much and didn't listen to myself Aye. when I should 
do you see in the gym through people you train and the family that you've created in the gym, do they try and train through their injuries to keep you pleased or to kind of... Uh, no, I'll say, I'll say to some of like, the, the parents and things like that with the youths, tell me if they're injured, send them into the gym because someone will say, oh, he hurt his wrist so he's not, coming to, he's not going to come to the gym. I'm like, no, send them in because, it's, I mean, some of you guys are pro youth, are good level boys clubs, they're chasing it, they're chasing it to yeah. my plane. If you were at a full-time club or if you were at a, a high-level club, you wouldn't just say, I'm not coming to gym today because I've hurt my, I've hurt my, my wrist sorry, or whatever. Okay. You would be in, you'd be doing what you could, you'd maybe be working with a physio or mm-hmm. if it was a decent setup in with a sports scientist, strength, strength condition, whoever. You'd be in doing, you'd be in doing training, working around your injury. Mm-hmm. So I always say to people, like, tell me, I, I'm not no the gaffer, so I'm not your gaffer, I'm not going to tell you you're not playing, but I'll advise people, listen, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be playing. I mean, I've had boys come in who've maybe got knee pain and um, do some simple kind of observation tests on them, they can't stand in one leg, they'll do some single leg stuff, their knees all over the place, they've got weaknesses here and there. I know, but I've got a cup game coming up. And I was like, well, see if you're going to play in that cup game. You're that unstable there, you, you change direction. You you land wrong on that, but you're crucial. You're going to be out for longer yeah, as and well. You're done. Ah, but, so I try and advise, I'll advise, them, as, advise them as best mm-hmm. I can. Um, how important is it, do you feel, to try and... To tr- how important is it to try and prevent injuries? Oh, Megan, that's what, that's what my my youth programme is built on injury prevention. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's, a, that's a big thing because well, the, the majority mm-hmm. are of injuries in football is the non-contact injuries. So, sorry, the majority are non, of knee and ankle injuries is non-contact. Uh-huh. Um, and that's what I'll say, the person, how many times have I've done my ankle, just twisted, landed funny, changed direction. Cruciates go, many people do you know have done their cruciate when nobody was near them, they've twisted the wrong way. Obviously some get done yeah. in tackles and things like that, but so many, there was nobody near them, no. bang, it was just, and it's down to weakness, it's down to the the the, the body not being able to absorb, not being able to control that change in force, or the change of direction and the force that gets through it. So my, my youth programme is built on injury reduction. What's the best way to prevent Getting an injury, making your body more robust, and working on the full package, working on everything. The amount of people who say, "Don't worry, work his legs, legs does his football does his legs, not Disney." No, no, it really does. Football does football. Mm-hmm. Football does football. Are they going to? Are they go to a boxing club to get them fit for football? No. Boxing will get you better at boxing. Football will get you better. Come to me, and I'll get you stronger and more athletic mm-hmm. and more robust. And get all the muscles fired and get all the muscles. Fire and, and that's and, the hence the name specific. And, 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 and it's literally <laughs> just. Ignorance. Mm-hmm. I've seen it in football when I played professional myself. Aye. All footballers, not all of them, mostly are ignorant. See the ones that do go for the extra training, put the extra work on, they get caned. Aye. Kenny mm-hmm. Arthur used to do it all the time. People, what are you doing extra straight? You know, I can't see going to that when you're injured, turning up for training. What am I here for? And all that lazy mm-hmm. aye, attitudes. Aye. And that's why Scotland's aye. where they're at. That's why we're aye. terrible as a nation and we're not producing world class players. We know that. Why not change it? Who's sitting in these seats that mm-hmm. are just going, why aren't, you know, I don't know, I don't watch open goal and all that, but are they pushing that kind of thing on open goal and stuff? Or is it all just banter? No, it's more you know just I mean? banter. You know, why, 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 aren't we, why aren't we putting mm-hmm. that stuff on open goal, a show that can maybe make a difference? Go and talk about why. Well, Sai did mention, I actually, Sai mentioned that he was talking to an Ajax coach, and the Ajax coach, coach said that from the age of nine, I'm sure it is, for the age of nine, the kids in Ajax Academy, three times a week, are doing injury reduction, strength and power. Yeah. Stretching and all that kind right. of stuff. But we all know that. We know mm-hmm. the you Dutch saying, programme. Saying, so why are they not why they why doing that here? I know the Dutch programme is on. They're in my gaff, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's a shooter, he's saying. But that's what I'm saying. They've got people like yourself who are qualified in that. Why not use you better and people in your the, industry The reason I, I set up my own place was because I had done these positions and voluntary positions and wee jobs here and there. And your facilities were just, no. we've never had the facilities no. to date, and I just get sick of it. And I went, Do you know what? That's why I'm going to, I'm going to open up my own place. I'm going to uh, get a big startup loan, kit it out properly, and let's do it right. Mm-hmm. And if the people, if the people in, we have the young boys in who've, uh, who've then been picked up and went to like a wee guy went to Hibs and all that, he's at Selig and things like that. Um, and the sports scientists are then getting on to do the gym work. They're, they're miles ahead of their mm-hmm. fucking lighting because they're doing Olympic lifting and all that and they're doing their squats or deadlifts mm-hmm. so they're getting used as the demos and then one wee guy moved to Hibs and then the, 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 the academy had a sports science academy told him he says what's, mm-hmm. what's happening to me man because all the wee guys were all the other place they couldn't, they couldn't do lunges right? and he, he was doing a more advanced yeah, no. one he was doing a decent weight the wee guy was only 11-12 mm-hmm. he's like what's happening where have you been mm-hmm. 
Um, there are wee guy, other boys have been used as example at the team because they're strong, robust, and right. they've got a good physical literacy. But that's what and I'm only doing basics. I'm not doing it in fucking groundbreaking. But see that that's the difference from probably making it. And no, because I think with the young, especially young boys, they think they just need to turn up on a Saturday and play well, and they're going to make it. Aye. It's all this stuff in the back. The difference, is, it, mate. The difference is a hard been, work and I've discipline. I've been in gyms and seen Rangers and Celtic players, and they can't even lunge either. Aye. Mm. they're Aye. terrible. That's what I'm saying. I had, an, had an ex Rangers player in, and and the stuff I was doing, he says, "Mate, I've not done this," and he did a decent career. Mm-hmm. He said, "I've not done this since Rangers youth," Ever? and he'd been about down south and that as well. He's like, "I've not done this since Rangers youth." I'm telling Mental. you, it's the worst. I've seen Cal McGregor come in and train. He used to come mm. in and trim and train all the time. He'd come in, do a couple of press ups, a couple of step ups, and he would walk out the door. What are you here for? Mm-hmm. What are you in for? Aye. The only one that I've seen training well was the big boy for Kamarnock, the defender. Brilliant big guy, beard, ginger, his hair. Oh, he's, he's away now. He's, he's going a... far. Can't even mind his name. Well, no. no. Older boy, no? Uh, no. No, Chris, it's no Chris Burton, no. No, a really no. good player, defender. <laughs> <laughs> no, a really good player. No, I mean, Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris is older, Chris is older than any man. Really mean. good, I think he was got called up for Scotland in that now. He might not be at Kilmarnock anymore. Stephen Dutt? No, O'Donnell? No, not O'Donnell, no. no. Big centre back. The left side is Everyone going. was talking about him, big centre back. Big, I, think he's player. A, I know who you're talking about, I think. Anyway, he was in Olympic lifting, solid as a rock, man. Aye. Just brilliant. Mm-hmm. Big aye. specimen, and now he's now we think he's away down England. Aye, so you nice. you see that, but most of these I've seen all sorts of. I won't name them. All sorts of Rangers and Celtic players playing Dean. They, they can't do a gym session. Aye, they really aye, don't aye, know. Aye. They don't even know what to do. Any mm-hmm. football specific patterns, they don't know. But when aye. I played as well, you get a fizzy one. It's all people for uni. You know, mm-hmm. most physios that are in the football club. It's not just people they call in for uni. They, they come and they're starstruck by some mm-hmm. of the boys that are there or whatever Aye. and they won't shout at the boys to mm-hmm. tell them what to do. The boys will walk in as if they're... Be- we need a mindset change. We Aye. need it. Aye. You know, mm-hmm. no, we're not, obviously, we're not the best footballers in the world, but we're very, very experienced, mm-hmm. over 10 years experience personal training and um, it just needs to... You so know, I've, I, I I've got a couple of young lasses in my place that are, that are decent level uh, in the girls' academies. And one of them in particular is she's she's pushing on. To, she's been up training with the first team with Rangers, Brilliant. and the stuff she's doing. I mean, she's she she trains. She's a dream. Mm-hmm. She just turns up, right, gets Mark, it done, gives you a wee, wee high five, right, Mark. Some of them might see maybe need a wee need a wee bit of encouragement. Some of them need to hurry up. And uh, some of the people say to me, "Listen, <laughs> don't be shy. Don't be shy in putting their ass and 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 chinning them a wee bit." Aye. But that's we one. She just all right, Mark, and it's and to get a job done. I'll be like, right, just the next time you do that, just. Watch your knee that way, put your place, your foot, stamp your foot a wee bit more, be a bit more so cool. Right, she just takes on, does it mm-hmm. next time. Shift the weight up a wee touch, bang, shift the weight up. It's never like, oh, mm-hmm. I need to watch my legs or mm-hmm. I feel, and um, how's football going? I good, you up with the first team, I handle it well, I, I, it was good, I just mm-hmm. so focused now, aye. just probably oh, man. And the weight aye. that they're talking about as well, mm-hmm. and it's like you see sometimes, like I had, um, I've got a wee last year, a wee dancer, and she's only 12, 13, but she's been with me since she was about 10. I've done some rehab on her at first. And then she stayed, and you see the change in her, unbelievable, right. like, not even just physical change, like kind of mental change as well, it's just so confident, she gives you a wee one-liner, slaughters you and you're like, aye. just out of the blue, you're but just being... That's confidence as well though, aye, isn't it? It's aye, giving them the confidence and, and she, I mean, she's, feel better. She's repping squats with like a body weight if on her do, back. If you do find yourself injured, what would your advice be? Give me a phone. <laughs> it's <It's simple laughs> as simple as that. That's, that's the sales pitch, just give me a phone, aye. just find someone... Who's you need to, uh, to use an example, the, the cruciate ligament injury is a, is a big one. It's a very, very common one. I mean, my, my rehab programme's full of it. And see when somebody contacts me and says, I've done my cruciate, I'm like, it's, an, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a straightforward one. I mean, it's easy, mm-hmm. but it's straightforward. It's just so straightforward. But a lot of the time, people, it's the, the rehab. I mean, I've done mine. I got mine reconstructed and i just done one rehab. Um, but they'll, they'll focus on, oh, you need to work around the muscles around the knee to stabilise the knee. But they neglect the muscles at the hips. So, so the femur's else. unsupported. So when they then go back, the femur, they've, they've worked all around here, they've done all this stuff, sitting on a leg press and sitting on a leg extension and a leg curl. They've not, I'll get them in. I've been going to rehab here at this place. And then I'll come in, I'm like, standing one leg, do this. Can mm-hmm. I stand like, oh, I'm doing what? Not, can I do it? Can I do it? And I was like, right, start hopping. Fucking right, push. Right, stop. Wait a minute. We need to get right back to the start. Aye. We need to go back to the start. But I was, I was done rehab for seven months. You've been sitting on a, you've been sitting on a chair, then you? you're not mm-hmm. able to you're not able to control your body, and your knee's going to yeah. get it. Yeah. Um, so I it's, it's it's trying to find it's trying to find somewhere where you can get proper 
a proper structure mm-hmm. with rehab and that's why I started my proper rehab programme because that's I get people in, they're in three times a week, they've got their personalised programme, I control it, me and my other coaches will watch what they're doing, we progress things, we regress things, there's a, there's a consistent plan. Yeah. Nobody likes doing rehab, no. but see when you're there three times a week with other boys mm-hmm. and other lasses that are doing it, then it's better. and you see somebody moving on and you go, what, what stage are you at? I, I was here for so long and I'm doing these wee daft baby exercises, I'm standing one leg with an elastic band and, and our boys will say, listen, dare them, because see, once you can dare them, then you move on to that and see you feel difference. And, and they've got an example there who's went through it. Aye, aye. aye. And then it's, it's coming into, it's coming into a kind of environment they're, they're familiar with, rather than just going to the gym they're selling, mm-hmm. they see everybody doing all the sexy stuff uh, and they've oh, fucking got to go and work in their rehab and their heads away. <laughs> Whereas they came, out, they came into mine, and everybody's fucked, everybody's, right. but it's like slagging each other and like it's having a wee bit the banner, aye, 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 having a banner on that. <laughs> Before we finish up, um, the place we're hosting that needs to get working, so we always ask someone to tell us about a dark place they've been to, um, or the darkest place they've been to in their life, how they've dealt with it, how they've recovered, and how they've progressed to find themselves in a better place. Eh... Uh, Probably, the, well, as I said earlier on, again, it's trouble when I was like 26. Um, that was that was a probably that was a, probably the worst point in my life, I think, 100% the worst point in my life. So I was in a position where I just couldn't see any way out. There was a lot of, there was a lot of shit kind of on my, on my shoulders sort of thing, around my head, around my head. Um, and I just couldn't see, I couldn't see a way out. Um, I then had time out to, time and all step to go and think about it. So you've just been removed from that situation, and then you're, you're not partying anymore. Yeah, I was now out partying, so uh, there was clarity. There was that clarity, and I started training. Started. I was I was running. I was training. I was doing the weight. Started getting a bit of shape, um, and just felt you were getting up, feeling fresh, and that, just that kind of gathered gathered a bit of momentum. Um, so really, it was the, it was the it was the physical activity. It was getting it was that. It was that feel good factor, was, and that's why I always train because of the feel good factor. Mm-hmm. But it was that that brought about the change, that brought about the kind of mental stimulation when you're going right. Let's, let's go right. You're, you're clear. You've got clarity. Your brain's no full of toxins. You're uh, you're waking up fresh every day. You're thinking right, what can we do? You're training. You're buzzing after your training. You're buzzing. You're only going to come up with good ideas, and you're only going to think better. So, hundred mm-hmm. percent. It was um, it was a uh, pause, time out. Have a good think. Uh, stop getting out my nut. <laughs> Start training. Oof. And then that was it. That was a, that was a turning Love point. Man. With, men's, with men's mental health in crisis, I mean all mental health, <sighs> what do you think needs to change? People need to... Uh, they need better coping strategies. I think a lot of people will say, they'll say uh, like, I've got mental health problems. They don't have a mental illness. There's people that have got a fucking hit mental illness or mental illnesses. There's people who, who they don't really as such have a ha, they don't have a mental illness. They have bad coping strategies. They have bad habits. They things combined don't make you feel good. Yeah. So get the things to fuck. Yeah. Do things that will make you feel good. Mm-hmm. You'll feel better mm-hmm. and you'll go fuck. That was just a wee cold. Do I mean, do, do what makes you. If you've got a wee cold, if you've got a cold, you don't feel well. You, you're not going to do things that make you feel worse. You do things that will make you do things that I'm going to make myself feel better. Yeah, how do I feel better? Mm-hmm. So it's the same with the, it's the same with the heat. So if you're if you're physically ill, then do things that are going to make you feel better. My physical health, I don't go about drinking drinking fucking puddles and eating dog shit because I know that will make me sick. <laughs> so <laughs> mentally, you're not going to you don't go and do things that's going to make you feel shit. And mm-hmm. if you do feel shit, well, let's do stuff that's going to that's going to combat that. Yep. That's my motto. Do good, do things that are good for you and feed this. Men saying don't don't eat dog shit and drink puddles. <laughs> <laughs> Can he do that? <laughs> nah, got so I mean, that may be quite yeah. a kind of harsh, blunt message for some people, but, but it's, no. it's like, it's no. see the media, you could, you could, you could, people. Uh, no. the, the worst no. you're going to feel. No. Yeah, the worst you you're going to feel, man. There's a place for it. I mean, there's a, there's a place for it, but I think some people just need a, f- they just need, look, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. You were out fucking out your nut. You hate your job. Mm-hmm. You're in a, a relationship you don't like. Change your things. It's a direct message that you've got, but it's a hundred percent accurate, mate. And and I can definitely speak for that because I sat, as I said at the start, I sat in that self pity mode, and and I wanted everybody to do it for me. But the, the only way I've got to sit in this chair right now is because I put the action in. Aye, and, aye. and 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 you're direct, but you're fucking buying on the money, mate. And that's yeah. a, that's the truth. Action over anxiety. Hundred percent. We need loads of. I think we need loads of different people 
mm-hmm. leading this fight. Yeah, we need people like you. We need people like me. And we need we need people like psychologists and all that mm-hmm. there because it's a direct message. It's mm-hmm. amazing, but it won't work for everyone. So this is why I'm doing people. this NLP yeah. course yeah. because I want uh, to understand how the brain works better yeah. and how how you can change. Because I've done NLP sessions with someone mm-hmm. and it just totally changed my thinking. Mm-hmm. And then there was a wee blocky, like in a, mm-hmm. a mental block I had. Uh, and we're doing an NLP session that unlocked it and it yeah. just it was something that I, that I, mm-hmm. I didn't know it was at the back of my head it was it was something that was kind of holding me back with business and it just and I was, it blew my mind I was like mm-hmm. I can't believe I'm even carrying that about but didn't think about it it was like so that's how I'm doing that and I've done some more sessions with them um, about just kind of it's like I say to people it's like so you tidy the house you tidy a cupboard you tidy your desk you tidy your toolbox you go fucking right I know where everything is now Let's go. It's the same with the, the way I do the NLP, the way I'm, I use the NLP things. It's, it's just to tidy things up. Yep. You've got all these ideas, all these things in your head. See when you fucking tidy them up and putting them in the right bundles. Mm-hmm. Right, Joe, right, let's go. See, yeah. this is a good example as well though, right? So you've got a great message and you've got a great message. Two completely different ways of putting your message out there, but I can get so much for you and I've definitely got so much for you. So... Uh, as you said, a hundred percent. You're a complete. You're you are completely similar. Uh, sorry, completely opposite. But I got very similar. Uh, yeah, but very <laughs> similar. But you have got a different message. But at the same time, I got some for you, and I got some aye, for you, and, and that's the same for anybody aye. in general. Like somebody out there, doesn't matter who you are, can help someone yeah. else, regardless of what you've got and all that yeah, kind of I stuff. I think you've got to as well with mental health. You've got to open yourself up to take messages yeah. from lots of different oh, aye, 100%. individuals. It's actually acceptance. Mm-hmm. But we need to, to, to finish quite quickly here. So with a lot of talk about how men act, right, and women pouring out stories of what's happened to them by um, about their experience, do you think that we need to take a good look at ourselves or that women need to watch the blame game or a bit of both? What do you mean men need to look at herself? What were her behaviour towards women? I don't know if that's... I don't know how... You... <laughs> oh, you're pretty, you're pretty right on his head, big man. Oh, oh yeah, baby. You might know me to send me these first. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I don't know, I think individuals, I think men just need to be... Like, men just need to be... Men need to be men. men and the way I, the way I, like, I said to, I said to, uh, uh, we were in a fucking Aldi or something, right? And there was a, a woman kind of struggling. Uh, she'd a hang me, she'd a, she'd a wane and she'd a, pr- a buggy, no, sorry, a trolley full of stuff. And she'd try to go to the motor. And I said, Do you want a hand? I'll take you, I'll just go to the motor, we, like, I'll push the trolley to the motor. She went, I'm quite capable, thank you. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. fucking hell, man. I was just trying to be a nice. gentleman, but uh, now being a nice. gentleman, you can offend people. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm yeah. kind of old school that way, like kind of, mm-hmm. uh, aye, aye, like stand up to give a woman a seat or something like that. But now that's all what you cause my woman, you need to give me a seat. So I'm quite kind of, I would say traditional and old fat, like old fashioned. So, but yeah, I think that extreme feminism but ruining I it think, for else. I don't think women need to watch how how they act or how I think people in general just need to take responsibility take for their own individual yep. actions. So I agree. Um, I, I don't think I know there was stuff going about like about uh, lassies about how they dress or something. Fucking dress how you want, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think you're always going to have individuals, mm-hmm. whatever their sex is. Yeah. Whatever your sex is <laughs> identified as nowadays, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you're always going to have individuals who are yeah. fucking wrong or something. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I think I, I absolutely agree. So the individual's got to take care, got to take responsibility mm-hmm. for their own actions. You know, it's not it's not a gender, it's not a, a type, it's just the individual taking care of what they do. I think there's always going to be evil individuals, Aye. men and women. So I think guys that maybe go wearing it, lassies or yeah. that sort of thing, I mean, absolutely. it's obviously, it's, it's out of order behaviour. But we, all, mm-hmm. we all need to take more care though and responsibility yeah. for yeah. self, not for everybody else, but for you as a person and as long as you're doing all right, then it's then their responsibility makes you there, but we we don't we don't work well yeah, as a society. There's so many things what in society. Be sound. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's it. Well, that's that, it. What, so what, be sound, man. what traits do men need to keep in bin from the old school man? For the old school, I'm trying to keep old school alive, man. <laughs> I'm trying to keep old school alive. The whole of it. Hey, the whole of it. <laughs> men, I think men need to be men, man. Like. I think men are just becoming more feminine nowadays, like the way they look and the way they dress, and it just, 
fucking kills me, man. I'm like, <laughs> being, a, a, being me like a grander, man. <laughs> um, and I'm not even, I'm not even, I mean, I, I know so I know a couple, of, like, a couple of gay guys that are right fucking men. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, in fact, I worked in a, so I was in a professional capacity, I was in the polo lounge, and there was these two, two big, like, two big rough guys, man, trendy, trendy, well done and all that, and all that. Like, oh, oh, big man! Well, I'm one up pisses, we'll have a party, we'll make a real man out of you. I says, mate, nah, I'm cool, man, I'm I'm at the birds, and he's like, I'm oh, so half carried to you, man. He's like, I'm one up pisses, man. I was like, nah, you're all right, boy, man. And then we'll be walking by, he's like, I'm one big man, he's a shout and all that. Pure, uh, like, weren't they, they were just, no, they were just men, normal, man, they uh, were macho men, you know what I mean? Uh, it was funny, man, they were a good laugh, but. So what, do you think all men need to be macho, or do you think no, that just, they need? No, I think, I think, well, I put that on my story the other day, I was like, masculinity is not a crime. I think it's getting kind of villainised nowadays. It's like, mm-hmm. see when you were, see when you were wee, and you do a granny and your granddad, your wee granny was like, yeah, we you wee cuddle off your granny, your granddad, you cuddle off your granddad. It was like, I think, like your, your granddad would fix things for you, or your dad would fix things for you. I'm not saying my mum wouldn't fix stuff, but you went, uh, you went to, you went to them for different yeah. things. Do you know what I mean? If you were greeting, you maybe went to your ma. Mm-hmm. If you were, I don't know, you wanted to do something else, like I don't know, you fucking fix this or show me how to do this then I go to my dad because you're a guy so I would look up to your dad as being your, your role model so mm-hmm. um, I don't I think I think I mean be what you want be an, mm-hmm. an actor you want but I think I think that masculinity is masculinity and the, the old fashioned working class fucking man is being kind of it's as if it's dangerous to be that or it's not dangerous but it's as if it's been kind of villainised, mm-hmm. and I think it's all right to be it's all right to, to be a fucking man. Do you know what I mean? It's interesting. It's that it's, you know it's it's not my place or anyone else's no. place to judge. It's everyone's got an opinion. It's nice to hear yours, um, and, and that's what I think's important. I think it's listening to everyone's opinion mm-hmm. and accepting it, whether mm-hmm. you agree with it or not. You yeah. accept it. That's just you talk opinion. about it Aye. and you move yeah. forward. Absolutely, it has been. It's been funny. It's been a great <laughs> episode. Um, you know, it's even got my producer in the background smiling most of the way through it, which is which is a, which is a bonus, I tell you. He's <laughs> saying I'm cutting out. I'm cutting out. <laughs> Some way snoring in the background. We're, like, getting, get these, we're getting banned off YouTube. Get these, guys, that, man. get these guys to shut up. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, um, guys, thank you for tuning in. For tuning in. This guy is fantastic, you know, he, um, he keeps so many people inspired and he's motivated thousands through lockdown, uh, even myself and, and, myself, and Dylan, yeah. who discovered his page um, about a week ago and has fallen in love with him. No, hey, I've followed, I've followed him for a I'm good few months. I've oh, got boy. a poster on him in my wall. <laughs> Hello, man. He sent me a wee pic and goes, I think this is all right for my, my screens there. <laughs> is, is it too much? If he sees it, will he run away? Uh, oh, fuck, still that. <laughs> uh, so oh. it's, it's, been a, it's been a great episode. It's, it's, we're getting on so many different people from so many different walks of life. Um, and I hope you're enjoying it too. Please, please like and subscribe. Um, Give us a follow on Instagram, the Fuck the Mindset podcast. Mark's handles are, what's your Instagram? Uh, the Neddy Scientist. So, at The Neddy Scientist, or I think you can type in, if you type in Mark Laurie, it will come up as it's uh, there as well. What's your other handles? Uh, my gym is specific.glesga. His gym is specific.glesga. Glesga. Glesga. Um, <laughs> and he also has a clothing line. Um, I don't know if you want to turn to the camera and show That's it. That's uh, clobber.ltd. Clobber.ltd, and uh, you'll see it in the camera there. It's some great stuff. I bought a t-shirt and a hoodie, didn't I? Or two aye, t-shirts. Aye, aye. They are class. Oh, did you buy the rabbit line for free? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know if I bought mine or not, actually. But, um, I, you know, I've got to, I, I'm all about supporting local businesses. We've got the shops as well. We're talking about your socks up. Fill your fucking socks up, man. <laughs> so, um, and he's got that. I actually was starting my company personally in Zane, and I got a lot of tips from Mark because he'd been doing it before, so I appreciate that. Guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been, it's been a pleasure, bro. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for coming, mate. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.